Hi, this is movies, a podcast about the actors. So let's talk about this Bollywood <laughs> fan website. Um, so there's a we we got listed uh, for Mass State Lottery on BollyFan.com, and it has um, plenty of bios for the actors. And that's not the entire cast. So it's not even in order. Uh, we're just taking a look at this right now, uh, real quick. That, that's not the correct cast order. That's not everyone who's in the cast. Uh, there are people who are much higher ranked that are not featured here on this page. But this is what I found today because I like to do routine Google searches of, of the movie. <laughs> That's me. They squished my Brief. picture so I look a little chubbier than I actually am. That's fine. <laughs> um, what's, what's Hobo Mock? That's one of Jake's old short films. Oh. So that's from, wow. oh, from uh, IMDb. <clears throat> Frank, oh, you got okay. any IMDb listings? Have you? I don't. No. no? Oh, I'm actually, very, I think you, yeah. you do. I think you do for this show. I think Frank Austin oh, comes out. And you're probably like the Frank Austin XII or something. That's a pretty sure, common yeah. name. XVX, yeah. I, uh, Interesting. I, I made an effort to try to add every episode of movies to IMDb somewhat <laughs> recently, which was uh, an incredible task to undertake because we've done... What episode is this, Hans? I don't know. You don't even uh, number them anymore on, on YouTube. Let me no, I don't. Um, it's just, it's better that way. It's like, oh, we're talking about Resident Evil this week. All right, people will check that out. If it's episode 209. Okay, well, that seems both looking. early early and too late. So It's 174 out, so this would be... No, no, no. 170. If, if 174 is out, then on Patreon, we have best movies watched in 2021, best movies of okay. 2021, uh, we did the show on RoboCop, and we did what did we do last? Do you remember who do we have on? Who is the guest? Do we, when did we record last? We've been on hiatus a little bit. Um, <laughs> I I fucking what did that? Was, oh, Resident Evil! I just said that we had we had uh, Kyle Girardi on who directed. Oh, the Perfect right, Life. Yeah. that's a weird little short film. You might like that, Frank. I don't know. Um, but that has nothing to do with what we're talking about tonight. What we're talking about tonight is a Marvel Comics classic character. Uh, this is not the first time we're delving into Marvel on this show. We did cover, once upon a time, Avengers Endgame and Avengers. I don't even understand why we did those shows. I think it was just we? planning. Yeah, we were just saying, oh, this even... sucks. This is horrible. Why are we watching <laughs> yeah. But these movies, these Punisher movies that we're going to be talking about, um, there's a lot of range here. You get different flavors of, of comic book eras with, with each one, I think. Um, from 89, where they're still not really sure if they should lean into yeah. the comic book aspects, to 2004, where it's like, well, maybe we can market this the same way you know, Spider-Man was marketed, to 2008, where, I, honestly, I don't even really know where to fit that in because it's not like the Dark Knight at all. It's much more like Batman Forever or one of those movies. Um, but I'm excited rated to... R. What, rated what, R about Batman Forever. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Anyway, we'll, we'll save the comments about the, the earlier Punisher films for when we get there. Um, but Frank, I, I think we were talking about the, the, the Punisher TV show when you were on last for the family man and the weather man, a classic yeah. double feature natural, there. Natural transition to talking about the Punisher. <laughs> yeah. We were talking about the weather man. So, uh, I mean, what, what is this? What is this? I have my cop lighting going right now in honor of Frank Castle. <laughs> um, I mean, what, what is your fucking, relation uh, with the character? Epilepsy warning at the beginning of this episode. Yeah, <laughs> it could be much worse. I could, I could turn it up and it would be actually <laughs> epileptic. Um, anyway, is the Punisher like one of your more uh, preferable comic book characters? Or yeah, I think like as far as Marvel stuff goes, I always like the Punisher the most. I like when I was a kid, I was really into X Men. The you know the cartoon was big, so like uh, that was an easy watch. But uh, Punisher was always more fun to read, like in the comics, than most of the other Marvel stuff. I, I didn't. I never got super into reading like issues of comics when I was a kid, but uh, like the Punisher stuff that I picked up was always really cool. I just, I mean, cut around all the superhero stuff. He just shoots people. It's yeah. great. It, it also had one of the best arcade games, uh, beat em ups uh, there is. I don't know if you guys have ever played it, but I spent a lot of Costa Rican coins in that <laughs> Punisher arcade game. No, uh, I, well, the, I mean, the Punisher I was most familiar with, I think, 
as a kid anyway through spider-man because he would pop up from time to time as a spider-man yeah. villain i think that's how he he started maybe i could might, might have this wrong that's how he started out in the comic books or at least in the animated series i remember he came up as uh one of his you know opponents same with blade they tried to throw in those darker marvel characters and you know put them in that cartoony world where they didn't even have guns i'm pretty sure the police on the spider-man the animated series were not allowed gun- they had laser guns <laughs> so that's the kind of you know cartoon we're dealing with here but i remember getting the punisher 1989 on dvd at walmart finding it in the five dollar bin and i was like is this the same punisher because he doesn't have the skull if i recall correctly there's no skull in the first movie at all yeah it's just he's more of a he's more of a leather daddy <laughs> than <laughs> any other punisher <laughs> Yeah, there's no skull in the first movie. It was also, I didn't realize this until I looked after I watched it, but it was a direct-to-video release in the U.S. Really? Uh, yeah, uh-huh. they didn't. They, they played it in theaters internationally, but direct-to-video here. Now, I, 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 this movie falls into the same category as something like the Captain America with Matt Salinger, J.D. Salinger's son, uh, where I think that might have also been direct-to-video, and I found that at a blockbuster. And you know, there, there were these movies that just nobody was really talking about that fell completely below the radar. And if you watch them now, you can find a lot of entertainment in them. And I had a lot of fun with this Punisher movie that I don't think I had when I was watching it as like a 10 year old or 11 year old. I kind of felt, uh, you know, uh, like, I, like I had gotten uh, something robbed of me because it wasn't a particularly comic booky film. It felt just like a Dolph Lundgren cop movie from the eighties with, with Louis Gossett Jr. Um, but then I, wa- I pulled it up on YouTube just a couple of days ago. And I was like, damn, this is a much more over the top, enjoyable film than I remember. I mean, this might be, <clears throat> excuse me, the best of the three movies, but I mean, we can get into that. So what, what is your particular opinion on this Punisher 89 so, film? I, it's not my favorite of the three. I don't want to like spoil stuff for later, but it's not my favorite of the three, but you're right. And you sort of know what you're in for pretty early. Like they go from Dolph Lundgren meditating naked in a mm-hmm. sewer to Dolph Lundgren yeah. driving a remote controlled semi truck with a bottle of booze to go bum fishing. Like it's, mm-hmm. it, you, it's v- very early on, you know that this is going to be a certain type of fun. And like, I enjoyed it watching I, I probably haven't watched it in like 20 years at this point but i loved watching it this time i was having a great time Lou Gossett jr is hilarious uh what his character's name is berkowitz or something like that yeah. which like they just they really do the new york cop thing perfectly yeah for certain yeah. hans i know you were saying you had a blast with two of the movies and one yeah. was a struggle yeah 2004 was just <laughs> well, we, we, we'll so, get to 2004 that, yeah. one I have, uh, that one i that was also a surprise for me um similar to the 89 one and even like, war zone when i watched war zone i was like wow this movie is not what i thought i was walking into um but 89 punisher go ahead uh we thought uh robocop very recently yeah and <clears throat> it feels like it's like a shared world kind of because um uh, uh, the way that the movie is, even the, the way that it's shot and everything is very, I mean, it's not similar, but you could you could see that if they were trying to make a shared universe, let's say with Robocop, like they would fit in like the same, at least years or like the same city, maybe, even though it's not. Um, I was very surprised by it. I ne- I had no expectations. I didn't really knew nothing about the movie. I'm not a huge uh, Dolph Lundgren fan. Uh, maybe uh i should start watching uh movies like it happened with nicholas cage where i just started enjoying them without knowing you know in the last episodes we talked about but um yeah uh very gritty and very uh like weird um uh like trying to be like hot at times but it's very awkward so it doesn't really work you know like that scene where he's just butt naked it's like i don't understand if this is supposed to be like trying to be sexy in a comic book movie like who's the target audience for this that's why i think it's like kind of letter daddy-ish like from around that time very uh judas priest what's his name rob halford uh reminded me of in in, in, in parts but uh yeah it was fun he, there was a lot of violence that i wasn't expecting and the kill count was very high too which which i was surprised by so i i enjoyed myself a, a lot that was the first one i watched too of the three he throws a knife through a geisha's head 
at one point in the movie. <laughs> I was wowed by that. I was like, where, yeah. where, where is this Punisher in the Thomas Jane movie? Um, yeah, this director, this is the only film he handled. I, he does have a Wikipedia page where he lists where he worked as a production assistant on a number of films. So uh, presumably he's been handling this Wikipedia himself. It was written by <laughs> Bose Yakin, who was set to helm the Batman Beyond movie back in 2001, maybe. Um, and he, his you know, resume is not all that impressive either. He wrote uh, Now You See Me and all those, those films. But this is where he got his start. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if this one is my favorite. Uh, I think it might be the best or most consistent overall of, of the three because it's just exactly what you said. It feels completely in the same texture as something like RoboCop. Um, but I think it's a certainly interesting piece of, and maybe one of the stronger pieces of uh, Marvel Comics filmmaking that predates the year 2000. Um, but yeah, you do have this, you have Captain America, you have, I mean, Blade is kind of a turning point a little bit. What Fantastic year was Blade? Four. Uh, what's that? What year was Blade? I that totally was forget. 97 or 98. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Uh, 98, yeah. Yeah, this feels more in line with, with Captain America and Roger Corman's Fantastic Four, which we mm -hmm. watched that Fantastic Four movie for Civic TV, which is basically this show, but we're just watching movies live. And um, that was very daring with its choice of making Mr. Fantastic uh, fall in love with the invisible girl when she's like seven years old and adopted. Yeah. it's a fucking weird weird movie he gives her like sexy eyes and she's seven right they it's meet very... they meet when he's like 35 and she's seven and then Jesus. they cut ahead five minutes later and she's 18 and then he's like whoa you grew up you're quite attractive hey you want to go to space with me Look too so. closely at all of the producer credits in that one. You'll get <laughs> yeah. nobody can live within 500 yards of a school. <laughs> um, any other comments on Punisher 89 before we get to this uh, John Travolta classic? I, I think that this is a really fun Dolph Lundgren movie. Like I think he's, he's clearly having a really good time in it. It's also like, it's, it's, it's ridiculous like it's 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 great uh they have a dutch guy with a dutch accent playing the head of an italian mafia family like mm -hmm. you know it's it is what it is uh and as far i think you're right about pre-2000 marvel movies where like this is it's perfect for what it is you know you can't i i don't, I don't really have any faults with it unlike <laughs> <laughs> yeah hold on before we move on uh i like <laughs> that uh dolph lundgren wasn't like a professional fighter in it like he was kind of sloppy with his punches and it, it, it didn't really feel like uh he was just gonna win at all times because he did get beat up a little bit but his movements weren't i don't know if it was just not well rehearsed or maybe he's just like that but uh i like that it it, it looked like a little of uh like, like he had a little bit of vulnerability with the way he was fighting because he wasn't that great at it. So that added a little to the character that I wasn't expecting because usually a Punisher just, you know, kicks ass or, or kills people with guns. And also, um, I like the fact that they hid his face for most of the movie. So a lot of the times he was just either in shadows or there was a lot of smoke or something covering his face so you wouldn't see who the Punisher is as he punishes, I guess. Uh, I felt like that was a, a, a pretty cool touch of that. that feel, I don't know remember a filmmaker you just mentioned it but uh i like uh, that uh, that they didn't Goldblatt. really reveal his they didn't really reveal his face until like an hour in i think you know this is the first time i realized that uh dolph lundgren didn't sound like ivan drago in real life i was stunned that he could just speak he sounds, uh, fluent english he, he sounds like he's making a, a bad stallone impression in this movie the whole oh, yeah, kind of. that's a good that's a good observation you know i think one of the strengths of the marvel movies that predate 2000 is that they seem to lean more into the genre that the hero or character exists in more than anything superhero related, but also because, mm -hmm. you know, I think, especially during this time, they were probably very ashamed of the comic book stigma. So they knew who their audience, they, they thought their audience was like 40 year old dads who would rent this movie at Blockbuster thinking it's some gritty cop film. And it is a gritty cop film, but yeah, it has the, the Marvel component. So 
things change when X-Men is released in 2000 and then Spider-Man is released in 2002. And suddenly Avi Arad is uh, trying to make as many of these movies as possible to, to line his wallet. And you get Daredevil in 2003. A lot of people don't like that Daredevil movie. I'll tell you right now, it's the best incarnation of Daredevil that exists. <laughs> You're not um, wrong. <laughs> and what else, what else happened during this time fantastic four is rebooted in 2005 that's a little dad yeah, this is about the same time 2005 2004 who, who are we uh, hulk hulk happens mm-hmm. you have uh, uh yeah. Lee's hulk. Mm-hmm. what do you guys think about that because i i could never get through it i've Andy's never seen hulk. It. yeah it's pretty bad uh it's it might i mean it might be i haven't watched it since it came out so but I, I had no desire to ever go back to it again but uh is it very emotional very internal struggle of the character i mean that's kind of all no. hulk stuff i'd have to i'd have to go back and watch it again to have like a, a more informed opinion on it i guess it's been a while i remember my cousin was so hyped up about it and brought the game over and the game was fun and then i rented it when it came out i didn't go see it in theaters and um, it was like an hour of just Eric Bana turmoil, like what you're saying, Hans. But it was also the way that it was edited and composed was like a comic book. And um, it was, to me anyway, at the time, very inaccessible. And there wasn't a clear cut villain or anything until the end, where I believe it was uh, Nick Nolte, who looks like Nick Nolte in his mugshot um, around that time in the movie. Uh, he, he look. he's... Um, who's the water villain from spider-man i'm pretty sure he plays that character like the water villain the water version of sandman (laughs) there's look there's a water there's a water guy (laughs) yeah the Uh, uh, yes so he's that guy kind of water man yeah, that's right. right yeah no i how could i forget water man that's, you're right yeah. Hans. thank you for, for 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 tagging out and getting that um so i i always found it very deeply boring especially compared to the other movies which were just very snappy very fast-paced um but it was a real golden age if you were a marvel fan you were finally getting these movies on the big screen with some notable actors in the roles and there didn't seem to be a hang-up about making a cohesive thing you got your X-Men movies. There was like a tease that maybe Daredevil would show up. That never happened. I think Elektra might have had some mutant characters come up in it as, mm. as the villains. Um, they played with the supernatural, supernatural there a little bit. And then eventually, what, 2004, we get The Punisher. And we get The Punisher from, who's the director of this movie? Hans, do you know off the top of your head? No, I'll check it out. <clears throat> I have the page open right here. It does not even say the, pun- okay. the Punisher's uh, director in the first paragraph. Jonathan Jonathan. Hensley. Yeah. Ooh. Hold on a second. Uh, I think we went to the same college. How about that? So Jonathan mm. Hensley, director of... the. No, he didn't direct The Saint, but he worked on Armageddon, The Saint, Con Air, Jumanji, Die Hard with Brother. a Vengeance. This is his directorial debut. He did a version of The Irishman, Kill the Irishman in 2011 uh, and a movie called The Ice Road with Liam Neeson in 2021 that looks like a red box original. Oof. So that I Why feel like is... his career makes a lot of sense when you watch this movie. <laughs> he's it's uh he's not so much the punisher in this movie as he is like a pranks guy. Oh he's yeah. got a lot of, <laughs> he he's got a lot of pranks. He doesn't uh he doesn't shoot so many people so much as he just like pulls practical jokes on him. Yeah, yeah. it's very Ashton Kutcher's Punisher. <laughs> which is right for the time um he's kind of uh all right so first of all frank castle really loves playing dress up and acting so he's this undercover guy and you know he fakes his death well, so they have a reason to kill like some he, of the yeah 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 do you, do you like his lick forward hair that was that was great to remember those 2000 what eight 2004 2004 times? Yeah, that's like the first scene too. He just shows up and looks like goofy with a hair like that. He's just like, ah, it's already <laughs> not a <laughs> cool Punisher at all. No. Yeah. no. <laughs> what do you guys make of Thomas Jane as an actor? Because I feel like he's not bad, but he he no. winds up in so many piece of shit movies. Yeah, I uh, I read a little bit of stuff on him uh, when after watching this because I was sort of curious. I was like, 
man, he, he just has such a forgettable career, you know, like, yeah. uh, he really, he doesn't, he never hits. Uh, and you can see that he had some ability. He talks, he, he, he does okay uh, at, at, in certain scenes and stuff like he holds up his end, but uh. what do you guys think is his biggest movie? Uh, maybe, well, he was in Boogie Nights, right? But he yeah. didn't lead that film. He's good in Boogie yeah. Nights, uh, but he's a pretty minor supporting character. This was one of his bigger ones. He was in The Mist in 2008 or 2007. Mm -hmm. That one, I year. think, critically has held up the best even though i i have oh. a contrarian opinion for that movie he's he's good in thin red line the part that okay. he plays in thin red line is yeah solid he um, was in uh dream, dream catcher oh right Damn, we should story. do a show on yeah. dream catch that movie <laughs> oh i gotta watch that again oh. uh. i saw it in the theater i remember <laughs> oh jesus <laughs> you showed up for that you paid to see that you should be embarrassed <laughs> yeah God, right. Frank, have you ever seen Dreamcatcher? I haven't. Sounds horrible. It's about uh, this was after Stephen. I think this was the first book Stephen King wrote after his car accident. And he was like, mm. you know what we're going to do? We're going to do weasels that enter your intestines and you shit them out and they tear you apart. OK, so that's the movie. And it's a dense book. And the book is fine. They squeeze it into a 90 minute feature with Thomas Jane, Jason Lee, the guy from homeland the redhead mm -hmm. damien something and who am, who am i forgetting damien lewis yeah and timothy morgan Oldham. freeman morgan freeman's got giant right. crazy eyebrows and can we just pull that up real quick um, <laughs> tom sizemore is in it tom sizemore going through uh heroin withdrawals probably uh, he's <laughs> in the movie he's great he's always great he should have played the punisher mm. <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> oh god <laughs> why which punisher character is this <laughs> <laughs> it looks um, like for a serious a stephen king movie you wouldn't <laughs> think they would do this but yeah yeah it's so bad. It's, that that, it's that was helmed by lawrence kasdan who's like a respectable mm. director he did the big chill he star wars. He, he wrote the star wars early star wars and the later mm -hmm. ones um and um body heat but that movie, my God, what uh, what a mess. I put that on on HBO Max recently, and that was a fun watch for about an hour, and then I got tired of it. Uh, this was also it long on HBO too? Max, it's a... Punisher. What? Yeah. I, mean, it's a, oh, it's a, I think it was two hours. So Thomas Jane, listen, I, I think he got a raw deal with this Punisher movie. I don't think this movie suffers because of him. I think hmm. he's plenty capable. And apparently there's a short film. I don't know. Have you seen the short film he did? I haven't. Uh, was it previous to this? No, it was after. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a Punisher short film called Dirty Laundry that he did with Ron mm -hmm. Perlman. 2012. 2012. You want to pull that up real quick? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. We can take a look at that. That was mm -hmm. uh, when they started doing those unauthorized uh, fan films with oh, yeah, yeah. actors. So um, I, I know he since has been like, yeah, I didn't really enjoy doing that movie, but I liked the character, so I couldn't turn it down. Um, I, 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 you know, he seems like he's always wanted to go back to that, and that—that's clearly why he wound up doing a fan film. Hmm. Uh, Twenty sixteen. So this is a re-upload. There's a yeah, Venom one of these that is not not that bad, and it's a re, kind of a remake of um, Man Bites Dog, the hmm. the French movie. Cool place. Oh, maybe I have seen this. This looks very familiar. We don't have to watch the whole thing. Just, uh, I would say, skip ahead a little bit. I can't hear a damn thing, Hans. You want to you adjust that volume? There's nothing happening. <laughs> yeah. Talk to that bitch. Did they use the Dark Knight soundtrack? <laughs> that fake new york yankees hat yo no, punisher only in new york get him out of tampa but he's, he's defending sluts now what what is this all right How be careful hey, listen, to his family be careful with this audio they use the track from the dark knight where michael jai white gets that uh, pencil through his eye okay. uh, no no he doesn't die that way but he dies another way and that's the track that wow plays. 
hold on, hold on one second. That's the horrendous. <laughs> they, they could afford Thomas Jane and Ron Perlman. They couldn't afford a Yankees cap. <laughs> you want Why to get... just? Why did you have a hat that says New York? You don't need a fake Yankees hat. It looks so. This is what you see like a terrible. Chinese man on the subway wearing, thinking he's <laughs> he's supporting his city. This is horrible. Um, can, does he don the skull? Can we see that? I think they're, he's doing laundry. Oh, there's a oh, bullet, bullet hole, hole. there. A black child. He's getting bullied. Yep. I mean, penguin. <laughs> Got some casings in the pocket. The fuck is this? You crossing my street? They're just bullying a ten-year-old boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just gonna so kill the kid he's, for... he's gonna save him, right? Where'd his hat go? Okay, all right. This, this is the audio version. <laughs> this is so bad right now. Come on, let's 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 get to it. Seven up. Oh, there, oh. there he is. Oh, oh he plays an invalid. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Love the A sanitation yeah, grade. One, yeah. The Punisher drinks Yuhu. <laughs> yeah. And vodka. Six months sober. You didn't pay for it? Fucking animals. Makes you want to do Did he dye his old... facial hair for this? Looks back. like it, huh? Yeah. That was me standing right where you are now, looking out that door. The only difference was a little girl back then. Okay, we don't, again, we don't have to watch the whole thing. Now. Let's just get to the action. We've been looking at him giving moody stares for the past four minutes. The audio version Beating of the show up this is little horrible. kid? Yeah. I just, I love that, uh, Oh no, he's gonna waste a bottle of Jack Daniels. Doesn't he have guns anymore? Oh. I respect the blood. Yeah. I respect that they dare to make a white guy kill a bunch of black men on the street. <laughs> you don't see that very often anymore. Ah, oh, the bottle didn't break. You think All they right. made this as like a covert, like, hey, Jack Daniels, if you want to buy this as an advertisement. <laughs> they made sure to get the label in the shot as he revealed it. So those who are listening and oh. are watching the episode, uh, the pressure oh. just took down a bunch of people with a bottle of Jack Daniels. So he broke his arms and legs. Poured one for the homie. <laughs> Go. Oh boy. It's gonna set him on fire, you think? Oh yeah. He's stuck. <laughs> <laughs> so corny. Walking away. Okay, laundry. Of his laundry is about to be done. Mm. 
Okay, cue the CG fire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there it is. It's a gift. <laughs> fire gift behind him. That's cool. All right. So he didn't punish. He just so this this is the the Christopher Nolan era of the Punisher that we missed out on. This is the little gap to be bridged before we get to John Bernthal. Yeah, um, I don't know which if I prefer this or the movie. I think they both kind of stink. <laughs> Especially well, the for... movie has John Travolta in a hairpiece. Oh, there's a, <laughs> damn that was a Walmart Punisher shirt. Did you see that shit? <laughs> <laughs> they just fucking printed that up. That looked fresh and wrinkled. Damn. Um, you got John Travolta. You got what's his name? Will, Will Patton. Patton. Will Patton. He's, I mean, he's, he always tries no matter where he shows up. <laughs> he tries. He, he's, he tries real hard in this one. Yeah. He kisses a dude at some point. He's, <laughs> you know, he's really going for it. Um, but also, ben. you, uh, duh, uh, don't even say his name, Ben Foster. I was embarrassed. <laughs> he's a good actor. This fucking yeah. sucked. God damn. Who thought putting Ben Foster and John Panette as John as Panette? The as the yep. Punisher's sidekicks in this movie was going to well, be a good idea. First of all, who thought that having sidekicks for the Punisher was a good idea? I think we could start there. Like, that well, didn't work at all for me. He has a sidekick. Uh, what's his name? Micro. Micro. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we get what's from Seinfeld. We get Newman from Seinfeld. And he's a Newman. pretty okay Yeah. Micro. Yeah. I don't think he's bad. He could have hammed it up. He didn't. He played it pretty straight. And then on the show, we have the guy from Girls who uh, ate, what's the anchor's name? Brian Williams, his daughter's ass on that one episode <laughs> of Girls. That guy shows up as Micro. So uh, that's not John Panette in this movie. John Panette's just John Panette, uh, just, fat comedian, passed away. Um, yeah, he's just fat yeah. and kind of gay in it. Yeah, yes, <laughs> just like right. you know, it's comedy. Yeah. So uh, you have him. You have Ben Foster trying to do a character with a lisp, uh, who's like a gamer, Ooh. I guess. Has mm -hmm. like like lip rings and and mm -hmm. uh, Very yeah, alternative uh, kind of guy for two thousand four. There's then you, two. It, there's two audience inserts in this movie. One is a gamer with three lip rings and the other's a fat guy who yeah. sings opera <laughs> lip syncs opera and well, they, uh, they ended up not making it about his family anymore right like he just wants to take revenge because they were mean to his friends no they it's it, the he the beginning of the movie is the the family thing right, right. they it's go like, yeah. they go extreme with it they're like no we're gonna kill his whole family this time yeah. it's gonna be oh yeah extended yeah. family as well we're gonna kill we're gonna bring out roy scheider from retirement yeah. he's gonna die in a couple of years he's gonna play the punisher's dad he and won't he won't act in any scenes less than 50 feet away from a beach this is the this is the deal <laughs> <laughs> like so <you> know. <laughs> They, they really go all out here where it's just like, yeah, everyone you've ever been related to is going to die. Um, which Did you guys like when, fine, uh, when, the but... Punisher, when the Punisher was punishing someone uh, and the guy was hanging and he was going to burn him and then he burned a piece of meat? He's a prank guy. He's yeah. not the Punisher. <laughs> He's the prankster in this one. His wife and his kid get run down in front of him and actually like uh that scene is like a very cool homage to the og mad max it's shot almost mm. identically to the way that uh max's family gets killed in front of him in the very like original mad max which i watched not too long ago uh and so when i was when i was watching it, i was like oh this is pretty cool uh but then you know as a result of that he gets a popsicle and some meat to burn and uh he's a prank yeah. guy outrageous yeah. he's uh, he gives the whole spiel and everything and starts poking the guy with a popsicle i was like what the f this this fucking sucks <laughs> this dude ain't a punisher he's he, i mean he does he kill anyone in this movie sort of but like he doesn't he also goes to great lengths like to not kill certain people he he kills travolta's kids and he kills them in a really funny way like he gets a really good one-liner off when he kills Travolta's kids. And that's sort of like the best murder that he does is he's got, he kills one initially and then he like hangs the, it's a, it's either a grenade or a mine, like a Claymore mine at the other one. And as he's confronting 
Travolta, like this sort of like final confrontation scene. Travolta's like, you killed my son. And then you hear the second kid like, oh, he's, he's holding up the explosive, right? And then his arm starts to give out. And you can hear, even though he's like inside and like many, like many floors separated from where he is, you just hear the guy go, no, and then an explosion. <laughs> and the Punisher goes, both of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it fucking rocks it's the best part of the whole movie <laughs> it's the coolest murder he gets to do but that's it other than that he just like pulls jokes i don't know i think the best part of the whole movie is when ben foster is being tortured by the script they start <laughs> ripping his uh, eyebrow rings lip rings off because i hated that character that was cool <laughs> and then yeah, steve he... nash showed up steve nash shows up and has a fight Kevin with uh, nash. tom jane Oh, right, sorry, Kevin yeah. Nash. Steve, Steve Nash, Nash yes. the basketball Steve. player. Do you guys yeah, know about yeah. this? Do you guys know about this fight scene? What? What? He stabbed him. A prop knife didn't get changed out, and so when he stabs him in the shoulder, oh. that's live. Oh, he stabbed boy. Kevin Nash in <laughs> in the chest right here, like in the chest and the shoulder. And Kevin Nash plays it straight. That's the take mm-hmm. that's in the movie. Is Kevin Nash just playing it straight and like? He just got stabbed and kept rolling. Damn, they should have gave him an Oscar that year for that. <laughs> that's, that's very Michael Massey on the crow style move there, is stabbing your your yeah. co-star. Wow. A pre uh, a pre Baldwin. Yeah, yes, a pre Baldwin. <laughs> um I mean, this movie, I remember in my head as a child, I was like, Yeah, that movie rules. That movie's so cool. And I was just thinking of the trailers where they had like stained or something on the sound. They would love doing that with these Marvel movies is get oh, either yeah. Nickelback or stained or Evan, whoever's of the time, throw their most recent hit over the song. And then it's going to make it look cool. So I had this version of the Punisher 2004 in my head where I was like, yeah. And I, we were going to revisit that a year and a half ago. Cause I found my <laughs> DVD of the extended cut of this movie. I was like, that's going to be uh. fucking great. And then I watched this and it, I, it was miserable. I was just waiting for it to end. Um, I, I couldn't what? believe just how bad. It, and also John Travolta is not trying at all in this. This is an early John Travolta saying, I'm just here for the paycheck. I'm, I'm not, not like in a look who's talking sort of way, but oh, at, at the point in his career where he's starting to transition into doing directed DVD movies, he just offers nothing in this role. It reminded me of his Gotti performance a lot. It was just oh, like, come what is on. He? No, he was trying as John Gotti. <laughs> they put him in the you makeup think? and everything. He was, yeah, no, he thought he was in a good movie and he wasn't. <laughs> so, no, I don't, I, mean, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think so. This feels more like, I mean, he's got the swordfish style hairdo and everything where it's long and, you know, he doesn't have the soul patch. That's the only difference. He dresses the same. He's got the same general look. But uh, no, he doesn't offer anything. He's just very low energy throughout the entire movie. Um, and he's kind of more of a punisher than the punisher in this film. It's like his son got killed pretty unjustly in that circumstance. And he goes and wipes out the dude's fan. Like, I don't know. I'm kind of team Travolta in this movie, but um, <laughs> I don't know. Is there any other thoughts we can share about this 2004 punisher film? Uh, one thing that sort of like connects the first two is that uh, these are movies that only envisage like that they can only think about Frank Castle or the Punisher as a cop or an ex cop. And that's unique to like the movies. That's not a thing from the comics, but like it's all, but in, in both of these first two movies, he's, he's a cop or a fed. Uh, And like, you think about how cops have sort of like co-opted the Punisher stuff in reality. And you you can find a a through line right back to these two (laughs) movies. Cause the Punisher never had anything to do with the cops before uh and like you know he's he's a he's an indictment of cops in general right. but these both of these movies he's it's the only way they can think of uh, a guy doing something like this as being like a broken cop what what is his comic book origin was he just um he's a vet he's a okay. he, originally yeah. a vietnam war vet whose family gets killed uh and an italian american which uh you know these movies are race yeah, Dolph Lundgren is not very Italian. <laughs> Damn, so no. my, my cop lighting here is actually just honoring the 2004 Punisher. I can't believe yep. it. I can't believe I played myself <laughs> like that. Yep. Well, yeah. Blue lights matter. Get- yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> we're, we're getting to the 2008 Punisher. This was kind of a soft sequel originally, and I think they tried to advertise it and market it that way at first, and they don't outright dismiss the first movie 
exactly. But this is in the same category as when they were doing Ghost Rider, Nicolas Cage, mm-hmm. Ghost Rider, Spirit of Vengeance, yeah. where it's totally a totally different film from that first movie. But they have Nick Cage, so it's a sequel. They did. I feel like they, that that's that's maybe the more uh, known of the two. Warzone falls under the radar. This type of comic book movie was not in fashion at the time. It was the same year as Dark Knight and Iron Man. People are on that wave. They want to either you know hop in the Iron Man boat or go with the completely gritty and real uh, Dark Knight style of uh, comic book filmmaking from this time. And this is directed by uh, some woman with a big mouth. What's her name? Alexi something. I don't know. She's really annoying on Twitter. Um, <laughs> Lexi Alexander. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. She's kind of insufferable, well, that chick. But this 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 is like her second movie. She did Green Screen Hooligans, uh, then this one, then something called Lifted. Uh, sure. Uh, says 13-year-old Henry Matthews struggles with life after his reservist father is deployed to Afghanistan with the help of a local pastor. So that's that's like by just saying that, that's like a huge downgrade from war zone so from mm-hmm. local pastor the boy decides to take part in a local singing contest it's about a kid that sings pa- patriotic songs after war zone and then after that she just did a bunch of tv shows uh, episodes of arrow supergirl you know she oh, fell so they don't trust her with, with movies or money anymore is what you're telling me i uh no i saw that she directed taken but it's just a taken tv show she directed uh, an episode okay. of mm-hmm. and then swat uh swat the tv show directed an episode of that that's pretty much that's the worst place you could wind up is in a cbs procedural directing that that's uh, that's the saddest outcome for any director with uh a slight amount of talent uh when when ty west started directing television shows i was i was very sad about that and i honestly i don't even really like the look of his trailer that he had uh released recently for that movie x i think it looks fine um kevin smith is another one Kevin, like, that was a choice of his. He didn't do that for yeah. the money. He just wanted to go direct something superhero related. I'm sure there's plenty of others. Uh, so, Green Street, uh, Green, what is it? Green Street, Green Hooligans? Street, Street Hooligan. Yeah. I've heard about this movie plenty of times. I remember that was one you would frequently find on like a friend's DVD shelf in 2007. <laughs> you know, if they ever had like something that was not American, it would be like Trailer Park Boys DVDs, Green Street Hooligans. And maybe like something else that isn't coming to mind at the moment. Snatch, oh, no, Snatch. Yeah, like well, Snatch was a. I mean, that was pretty popular here too. But yeah, yeah. I mean, you would you would see that in the lineup. Um, uh, um, maybe what's the uh, Train Spotting? It's another one that you. Would, I just watched. Find a lot. Train Spotting one and two yesterday, mm. and um, that I mean, hmm. did you see the sequel, Hans? No. No. Well. Uh, did you see either of the films, Frank? Yeah, yeah I, I, I like original Train Spotting quite a bit. I haven't seen the sequel. The first one was my favorite movie for a while. I really love the That's energy great. of that fi- and the use of music. And I, th- I think it still holds up very well. And then I watched the sequel again uh, recently. I, I caught it in the theater. And I bought the 4K Blu-ray of it a while back, but I never watched it. And there are things about it I really like, but it also looks kind of amateurly, amateur, amateurishly shot at times. This is something that directors tend to do as they get later in their, their careers is they don't really, they don't build a texture with the look of the film. And they're just kind of impressed with how clear it is. And that's certainly the case with Train Spotting. There's a lot of things in that that age it to 2016. Like you and you, you and McGregor was talking about rape jokes and slut shaming, and I was like, "Holy shit! I haven't." That was a thing. That was a thing for for years. Is is these? And now they're just gone from my brain. Suddenly they're back because of this movie. Um, well, you anyway. know what, uh, Dan? You know what Danny Boyle did after that uh, Train Spotting Two movie? What did he do? Movie. It's a movie called Yesterday. I don't know if you heard about oh, it. Oh yeah, ah, uh, the Beatles movie. But, uh, <laughs> He's yeah. about an Indian man that realizes that no one knows who the Beatles are. So he starts playing their songs. Because, he yeah. loves doing a wholesome movie <laughs> like that every so often. There's that in Sunshine where the boys I find like a Sunshine bag of money. Oh, I no, like no, Sunshine. Sunshine yeah. Sorry. Sunshine is the space movie. Slumdog. Yeah. I'm think- no, not Slumdog. Slumdog. That's the other Indian movie. No, these were white kids. <laughs> it was, what was it? It was little, it was little trans? rich kids. No, not tra- trans. <laughs> what? No, it was <laughs> God, the millions or billions. I don't know. Look, the movie's fine. This, uh, but how, where are we going? Billions, with this? Yeah. 
Yeah, bi- millions, sure. Um, this director who directed Warzone, I don't know if she's talented Lexi or Lexi Alexander. I don't know if she's talented or not. I think she I, is. I enjoyed this movie. I think this movie was a yeah. lot of fun. I think this yeah. movie looks great. This is one of the mm-hmm. better, better looking comic book films I've ever seen. There's some really yeah. pretty stuff in this. Uh, mm-hmm. Like there's some, like I took... I took a bunch of screenshots. I like uh, I was looking at stills afterwards. There's some really there's some very like well thought out composed shots. It's it's an it's an aesthetic movie, uh, which is more than you can really say for the others. Like, yeah, um, there's a lot more intention sometimes in some of this stuff. Absolutely. Um, th- this movie seems to acknowledge the fact that it's a comic book film and they crank it up a bit, uh, certainly much more than the 2000, which is pretty sterile as far as any sort of style goes. Um, and they really heavily lean into the colors with this movie in a way that mm-hmm. was not common for the time that you probably mm-hmm. hadn't seen uh, since those Joel Schumacher movies. Mm-hmm. A- and you also have an incredibly cartoony performance from the actor's name, I think is Dominic West. Is that right, Hans? Dominic West, yeah. amazing. Yeah, he plays so good. Jigsaw. Jigsaw. Now, mm, I yeah. remember back in the day before this movie came out, they were thinking about casting Michael Keaton as uh, Jigsaw in this film. Mm. And I was pretty hyped about that. So I was keeping an eye on the project. Then he bows out. They give it to Dominic West. And he is uh, very over the top. Very, very. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, I mean, Compared to, you know, I watched this movie and then I watched the Punisher show on Netflix. I was like, oh boy, Jigsaw is going to come in next season. That's going to be great. And that really disappointed me. (laughs) And uh, maybe we can, we'll get into the show a little bit. I still haven't finished it after we talk about this film. Um, But Hans, had you seen this movie when it came out originally? I saw it when it came out. uh, I think I might have rented it even, uh, but it was, so much fun uh, there were so many good one-liners from either his character or uh percy from the green miles character oh, what a warm guy did you ever see his reality <laughs> show with his 16 or 17 year old wife courtney stodden yeah <laughs> all right yeah he, he, um, he's like 50 and then she's yeah, like 17 yeah. or whatever with Here's gigantic with fake tits i don't i don't know if that was ever a real show but i know that they shot a pilot with their own money to bring to networks and they were like, mm. yeah, I'm a 40 year old actor and here's my underage wife. And together <laughs> yeah. we're, we're, we're a couple who's in love. And um, yeah, that worked out more for her than him. You know, so he's and, great in this, though. He's yeah. such a like weird, creepy, just little weirdo. Uh, but they both have so many good just stupid lines that you would i guess you wouldn't expect the movie you're supposed to be taken seriously but every time dominic west was on screen i was having a blast uh his performance was so cartoony and so over the top uh after he got his you know face fucked up that uh every line that came out of his fake uh, italian uh almost racist accent <laughs> that he was making in the movie. Uh, I don't know. I just, I had a lot of fun with that. I think the action was also, th- the fact that the first scene of the movie, he kills like 15 people already in a very graphic, violent way. I was like, all right, I'm in. Like right away from the start. Uh, and I also thought that Sam, uh, what's his name? Sam, uh, the Punisher guy. Fuck. Uh, uh, Ray Stevenson. Ray Stevenson. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, Sam. What the fuck is Sam? Uh, Ray Stevenson was great. Uh, I just playing a very deadpan, very like you know, I'm just here to do the job I'm supposed to do, and I'm not, you know. He he does get a little emotionally invested, but at the same time, like I don't want an emotional punisher. I don't care. Like the fact that he cares about his family is the only thing that drives him, or that I want uh, to drive him. Uh, so the fact that he uh, kind of adopted this this uh, FBI guy that he killed by mistake, uh, family, and then got kind of invested in that. Okay, that's a, that's like a good way of uh, making the character do what he does, I guess. But I also like the fact that he was very detached and very like not trying to be funny or like friendly or anything like the Thomas Jane character who has like a, a band of dummies with him. Uh, here he's very like, this is what I'm going to do. And, and, and uh, even though the the black cop who i thought was over uh, overacting to uh whenever he was on screen he was like he was like all the way here when everyone else was kind of here uh i liked their interactions a lot just because of how little uh the punisher character seemed like he 
gave a fuck about everything. He was just like, I'm, you know, I'm going to do what I'm going to do and fuck you. They also got a uh, Ray Donovan's retarded brother in this. Uh, and he was really funny too. Uh, I don't know what the actor's name is, but you know what I'm talking about. Uh, You're a big Ray Donovan talking fan. About, no, yeah, I love Ray Donovan. <laughs> Everybody from Boston Come watches on. Ray Donovan. Man, that show, I mean, not the show, the movie pissed me off because he walks into South Station where we shot from Mass State. They use the same exact beat for beat location. Uh, he moves in the, I, and I made the joke months ago. I was like, does Mass State Lottery have competition? They use the same exact locations we used. And then he goes inside and it's clearly Grand Central Station in New York. Looks nothing like it. And it's very, like, that's the most popular station here in New York. They're not fooling anybody. But that movie, piece of shit. Uh, Frank, did you see this movie? <laughs> not Ray Donovan, but uh, The Punisher War Zone when it was originally released. I did, yeah. I remember really liking it at the time. And uh, I, there's things I like a lot more about it now. Uh, Hans, like, I got a the most racist accent in this movie is the Irish one. That is some... <laughs> next level <laughs> shit that they pull with getting like a parkour stunt guy from fucking illinois or somewhere to try and do an irish i'm just calling him mcginty that uh, mcginty <laughs> like McGinty, by the way before, urban, before you continue free flow gang the way that the punisher blew up one of them with a rocket i oh. laughed out loud the whole time yeah because they're just doing the retarded parkour shit and then the second one just blows just up explodes it's perfect yeah it's, it's so funny. perfect and there's actually uh, yeah there's like sort of a through line in that scene too to the series uh when he drops mcginty onto that fence and then like jumps down from a building and snaps his neck there's a similar yeah. bit of violence in the punisher netflix series that i feel like is not uh it's not a coincidence um but i i like this movie a lot i uh i there the violence is really good the blood's really good there's a lot of like i i have you know i'm anti cgi blood all the way so like anytime you can get like a bunch of squibs and it looks really cool i'm very happy um there's a lot of cool lighting stuff like you know the 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 reference to like the Schumacher Batman movies I think is really apt like it's sort of like uh it's sort it's close it's close to those it's like an R-rated Ninja Turtles lighting thing that I yeah. really like uh and I um it's 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 just a really like fun movie for this era so you you mentioned the the uh ghost rider movie alongside it and they actually marvel actually did uh both these movies under an imprint called marvel knights that right. they had originally intended to be a like a darker comic book movie imprint that they just abandoned after these two um and i wonder if that has anything to do with the fact that they both just bombed <laughs> well yeah this one had like not great reviews right no. i don't I... think any of them got great reviews i think they're all bottom of the barrel as far as reviews go but I looked up the the budget and what this movie made back. Mm -hmm. And I, I do remember at the time, uh, because comic book movies were coming right back in fashion and in like a massive way, because, you know, there was a lull period after, um, you know, Spider-Man 2 even, um, where it was just kind of quiet because fantastic. Nobody was really excited about Fantastic Four. Um, the Hulk movie didn't really do the numbers or, or get the reception that I think they wanted it to. So you had this kind of little swing period uh, between Spider-Man 2 and Spider-Man 3, which was about 2007, and you know these films, because we got this and Iron Man and Dark Knight in the same year. So this movie was made on a budget of 35 million. It made 10 million at the box office, mm -hmm. which is atrocious. That's unbelievable. Like you can't fathom that now for a Marvel comic book hero. You could probably do like a, a movie of, uh, what was it, Man-Thing? <laughs> I think I think that's a character. One thing. You could do that. And yeah. it, it would probably do great numbers. Shang-Chi proved. Came, you, you could, could, could do, do Waterman. Oh. Yeah, Waterman would finally get his name <laughs> in the cinema. And also it also came out after Iron Man and uh what was the other Marvel movie? Uh Hulk. Which was Hulk I 2008 think, too? Yeah, Hulk was Holy June 2008. Shit. Yeah, all right, so 2008 I think was a Warson. It was a packed year. 2008 is actually a very good year for blockbusters and tropic thunder was that year pineapple express was that year a lot of good movies came out in 2000 hamlet 2 a lot of good movies 2008 
This capped it off. This came out December 5th. What a, mm, mm. Yeah. Right it was the after the real series. Christmas movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You would think that it would ape up that and, <laughs> and make money, but 10 million, that's horrible. It really is terrible. Um, and I think they just had to go. I, I, you can blame the the marketing of it. I think they moved this. From my recollection, they moved the, the film around a bit. They didn't really market it as heavily, I think, because this was an R-rated one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the other Marvel films were PG-13. And I don't think they had the confidence <laughs> in the film. I know there was behind-the-scenes trouble uh, where the director was being difficult or something difficult. Uh, and they wanted something that might have been a little bit more conventional. And this is anything but. Uh, also, apparently, this is interesting to note, uh, Freddie Prince Jr. tried to get the role of, of Jigsaw in this movie. Oh. Imagine that. You could have had that. Patty Constantine <laughs> was going to be Jigsaw for a while. Oh, wow. Hmm. That could have been cool. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. Um, so, it's, it's such a contrast, too, <clears throat> when you think about this movie and the rest of uh, the MCU, where every movie you watch kind of looks the same kind of has like the same beats and the same three acts this uh it's nothing like that like it looks completely it, it looks like an out of time movie like it doesn't look like a 2008 that like you guys said the like way he shot the colors they used and how uh they try to implement the comic book thing but i think only at the beginning like i didn't really feel like i was watching a comic book movie only because they made it obvious at the beginning with like the comic book strips after that like it didn't really feel like that the characters were cartoony yeah but you could i think you believe this as like a, an action movie from the 90s where every every evil person was like a cartoon of a russian person you know this guy is like a cartoon of an italian uh which i, I guess f- f- fine uh and he gets defeated very easily uh with his brother but uh it was a blast i was laughing more than i really thought i would just because of yeah. how ridiculous every performance was uh and, and so many little, like, good lines uh, in the movie, uh, especially from from uh, Dominic West, like the Transylvania line with the Russians. It was like, <laughs> what are you, like, the, we're not vampires. Like, what are you saying? Or the ragheads in Queens thing. Oof. That was like, oh, it's like, oh, wow. Oof. Okay. All right. 2000, what, eight? Yeah. Fine. Uh, Jihadiblogger.com. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, I asked you a question before he killed it with an axe. I fucking laughed my ass off. Uh, there was another one. Hold on, I saved it here. Uh, I shit red, white, and blue, which was for, by Jigsaw too. It was a very <laughs> Trump thing to say. Uh, I, I, yeah, I, I had a blast with this. I, w- I kind of wish I had seen it in the theater because of how pretty it actually is when yeah. it really has no yeah. right of being. I, I like the fact that his lair was in the subway station and he just lived there with like um, uh, uh, just a, a bit of steam coming out of pipes. And that's <laughs> cool. He, he, he eats shitty military food and that's all he has because he can't cook or whatever. Uh, I don't know. The, 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 I, I liked it more than, than the other two. I, I did like the 89 one, but uh, I don't think I, I laughed as much, uh, especially not on purpose. Like, I think I laughed at things that I'm not supposed to laugh on the 89 one. But this one had me like I was watching with my girlfriend and the whole time. She was like, why is this funny? And I was like, you just don't understand. <laughs> this is, it's not for you. It's just a ridiculous action movie with very. Did you answer that? Like, and like Joaquin characters. Phoenix and Joker, just you wouldn't get it. Like you're supposed yeah, to just, <laughs> yeah yeah i just <laughs> yeah yeah no i i slap i slapped my woman and was like shut up <laughs> i hope she ne- i hope she never <laughs> used this yeah but yeah i it was great i i um it's kind of upsetting that uh for you to get a superhero movie with an r rating that shows violence and they're not afraid of cursing you have to get either this or deadpool and maybe logan to a point and that's pretty much it um they kind of ruined it with deadpool 2 uh so that's probably not going to happen again i don't know when they're going to well, be deadpool able to do in general i don't it. think age well i think deadpool no. was was cool for what was it 2016 the time, yeah. um because like that, yeah. it was like all right well now we have a self-aware kind of dirty comic book movie that's r-rated and it's a marvel mm-hmm. hero and this is interesting because we don't really have this sort of thing uh, at least where there's a level of quality to it. And then that literally like the next year became the most cringe thing imaginable is anything Deadpool related. It's just like, 
really bad memes on Facebook, but a movie version of that. Uh, I, I can't imagine what they're going to do now that Disney owns it and they're going to do PG-13 uh, Deadpool. It can are you, are you much worse. Because you mentioned the Fantastic Four. Are you excited with the fact that they're going to try to revive that again as uh I guess multicultural family again. I don't know. Like, what are they? No. How is look, that exciting I, look, for I, you? I, I I like I I actually kind of like Josh Trank's Fantastic Four movie, or at least the beginning of it, because right there's a weird thing going on with the characters once they transform, or where they're freaking out about why they are the way they are, and also um, Doctor Doom is really creepy in the movie. Doctor Doom reminds me of the computer villain from superman 3 which scared me terrified me as a child where a woman's just becoming a computer face fucking monster uh he's and it, it's very like cronenberg he's making people pop in the hallway they're just exploding and then there's a cutoff point in the film where the studio's like we got to get rid of the rest of the movie and make this a traditional superhero film and it doesn't fit the vibe of the first hour where it's like oh fuck we're in space we got radiate we're falling apart here it's disgusting and they're just like, yep, now we're a team and we're going to we're going to fight bad guys. And I think like Human Torch is blowing people up in the Middle East for the government. He's doing some very bad things. He's kind of like Obama during that time with drones. You know, I think it's a political statement. Right. Um, anyway, the movie, it falls apart real quick. Uh, but there was a lot of I mean, I think if you allowed him to have his cut Snyder style, that something decent could have came. Oh. That. Well, what is he up to now? nothing he's blacklisted still he did that that he he did the al capone movie with tom hardy which was fine it wasn't bad or anything but it didn't make the splash that it was supposed to i think because of the pandemic it went direct to to streaming instead of hitting theaters i might be misremembering but i'm pretty sure that's the case didn't he also whine about the reception of it on twitter a bunch oh okay so i don't mind (laughs) that i don't mind him defending his movie what i really dislike is him being the guy who's like yeah i'm the guy who made that piece of shit hey everybody remember my awful fantastic four film that i defended for a year and a half and got kicked out of hollywood over yeah isn't that a piece of shit movie you fake fuck i hate (laughs) why i I really am just disgusted by that sort of hey everybody don't you like me hey i'm on i'm i am agreeing with all of you now see i can be part of the club remember how you made fun of me hey make fun of me again so i can get hey i'm making fun of me too hey could i just get a contract could i just direct anything please Um, well, he's so, uh, he's apparently writing a Theodore Roosevelt movie. Cool, great. I'm sure Tom Hardy will do great right. in that. Also, <laughs> um, who ha- who got the worst deal from the Chronicle uh, curse? Him or Max Landis? Ooh, well, Max Landis got ruined because of being a naughty boy, being right? A sociopath, They're running a cult or something with <laughs> Seth Green. I don't know. I rear-ended Max Landis in. Los Angeles once uh, intentionally he, or, or at, on accident uh, and he, uh, <laughs> you, you saw you see his pink <laughs> his rainbow hair from the back and you're like oh it's this guy <laughs> he stopped at a green light to pass a vape around and uh, I was driving oh. a shitty rental and he pretended to be injured to the insurance companies uh, after being yeah. like very nice on the side of the street and he, both he and his girlfriend at the time were like ah oh, my neck well, you know what's exciting about Max Landis? He's doing an American Werewolf in London remake. No, he's and, not. Uh, Pepe... No, that's old. He got he's... kicked off that because he's a oh, bad guy. He? Yeah, no, he's just doing... Here's what he's got lined up is uh, you? YouTube videos. He's got a YouTube live stream, I think, this week. That's about the gist of what he's up to. Uh, he was going to direct that, and I think he wrote a script for Bright 2 and a couple of other things, and they all just disappeared when that hit piece came out. Is it that still life? Yep. He should do what the Ghostbuster guy did and just remake one of his dad's movies. Bring He's back like, hey, it's me and, it's me and my dad. Hey, his children that got decapitated <laughs> yeah. on Twilight. Zone. Yeah. yeah, why not? That's, what yeah, they yeah. That's a good <laughs> idea, Hans. Why don't they hire you in Hollywood? I don't know. Anyway, Max Landis. Yeah, I, I don't mind some of Max Landis's comic book work, but he's so... Like insufferable. He's just so mm, 
makes me feel bad that Defensible. I enjoyed his Superman comic, you know. But anyway, I like him more than more than Josh Trank because I think at least you know he's terrible, but at least he has more integrity than Josh Trank. It's not like there isn't a playbook for like being you know unliked and yeah. and like still pulling it off, but it's never to like pretend that the shit you did sucked. Right. You know, that, right. That's not it. No, certainly not. I I think if he wants to ignore, you're like, oh yeah, I was kind of whiny. If he wants to do that, that's different than disowning your work, which again you vehemently defend. I despise that. Yeah, you're throwing everybody who worked on it with you under the bus. Right. Like it doesn't it doesn't matter how you feel about it. Like a bunch of other people worked on it with you, and when you say it sucks, like everything they did. Also, it's a very low threshold for the title of best Fantastic Four movie. <laughs> <laughs> like you don't have to do there's so much terrible associated with that title in live action you i mean the chickless film from 2005 and the sequel especially where uh what did they do cloud like a, galactus cloud galactus oh my god <laughs> and they tried to make it a pg film they did pg-13 mm -hmm. for the first one they were like well maybe if we just make it more even more kid friendly what if we go for toddlers on this one <laughs> do, you do you remember jessica alba she was yeah. two right it's been yeah. a while where is she, where is she what is she doing she, look, she's extremely <laughs> wealthy but um she runs like a makeup company I, I only know that because she popped up on the arnold schwarzenegger celebrity apprentice as like a boardroom advisor for an episode so that's what she's up to she's making money but uh All she's right. not acting really she's she like another uh famous marvel actor toby mcguire who has just been uh, running the tables. You know, he's been taking people's money, playing poker, hustling people out of tons of money. That's what Molly's Game was about, the Aaron Sorkin film. Um, cool. I like yeah. him. I think he, he uh, well, he's pussy pasta the legend, right? Yeah. First of all. Toby uh, so he Toby, all, yes. if you ever see him on the street, he always looks like he's about to fuck somebody. He always looks like he's in a terrible mood. <laughs> <laughs> like his life just got ruined right before you saw him <laughs> so i like that about him i like that he actually is like the bad brother in brothers the movie with jake gyllenhaal right. that's him in real life but um anyway so punisher war zone i enjoyed it quite a bit is right i mean do you th guys think that ray stevenson is maybe the best punisher because i think i almost lean in that direction i don't know if i want to commit to that statement Renthal is the best punisher yeah, Bernthal, Bernthal's the best Punisher. Stevenson's the best movie Punisher. But mm. he, have you guys, have either of you seen Rome? Yes, I, I started watching that uh, somewhat recently. Yeah, uh, Rome is sort of the limits of his acting. I feel like, and like he's he's really workmanlike. He's 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 good enough, but he'll never do anything more than what he did in Rome. And like playing sort of like a dead-eyed Punisher is perfect for him. I, I like he's a great cast in this. I feel like both because he's really good at the role and like it suits him really well. I you agree. guys uh, do you guys notice that uh, Jigsaw had like a, a Kmart Paul Giamatti uh, sidekick character? Oh yeah, like he's second hand. I was like, who looks very familiar? He looks like someone that I've seen before, and he just like kind of looks like if you can't get Paul Giamatti, let's just get a guy that kind of looks like him uh, with his son, I guess. Uh, that that kind of bothered me for like half an hour because I couldn't picture him, and then I was like, all oh, right, fucking. Paul Giamatti-ish guy. I think another reason why this movie did not perform well is you don't have any stars in it. Mm -mm. Um, no. no offense to the cast here. They all do very well. But this is literally like a Showtime show. So Ray Stevenson was on Rome, and he was also a villain around this time on Dexter. He played a gay hitman with the Russian mob. Mm -hmm. right. And then you have uh, Dominic West, who's best known for The Wire, right? You have Dash Mihok, who I think is what you were referring to from Ray Donovan, um, was a redhead. He was a, yeah. he popped up on tons of these shows during the time. Um, Julie Benz, also from Dexter. So, I mean, these, these are the type of, obviously, Wayne Knight uh, as, as Micro. That's about the biggest star, the most recognizable face you have in this movie. So you don't have John Travolta's star power who's going to draw the 50 million or whoever showed up to the theater to go see that 2004 feature. Um, 
I, I, don't, I think it makes sense that this movie would bomb, especially with the, the moving around to the, the day, not really knowing if they should push it as a sequel or a reboot or whatever. Um, well, I guess it was before um, the MCU really got going because uh, I feel like for those movies, uh, people stopped caring that much about who the, the star was. Well, actually, never mind. Because you got Robert Downey Jr., right? You still got people that became... Not him, but like the other actors, I guess, became huge stars because of those Marvel movies. Right. Uh, but in but in this one, uh, yeah, you don't really have a recognizable face and the character is not really uh, very... I mean, it's well known for people that are interested in this, but I don't think you can just ask a regular person who the Punisher is and they'll know much about him. Other I think than, they'll like, know, the but there's no love for that character the same way right. i mean look there wasn't for iron man iron man was nobody at the time people make jokes about how <laughs> aquaman was the lamest hero people you know talking about his outfit and stuff but iron man was essentially that for marvel you did have robert downey jr but he was also washed up at the time he was uh um, yeah. you know ex-convict the the i mean the thing with the most acclaim that he was doing around that time was kiss kiss bang bang the shane black film mm -hmm. and that was about it he was in gothica <laughs> he did ally mcbeal right out of prison so there, i mean there wasn't that kind of uh love for for downey just yet that came because of i mean mm -hmm. it was just the perfect storm uh for him and iron man but you did have edward norton as the hulk and edward norton was a star at the time and then you have right. oh i guess the punisher's out next month and that has the guy from rome <laughs> yeah uh, hey yeah. i heard newman from seinfeld is going to show up in the punisher movie. okay <laughs> with, a, we, with a goatee yeah, yeah. <laughs> no man with a uh, black and white goatee you they dispose of his character too killed? like like with with no sentimentality Nothing. whatsoever Nothing. it's very yeah. tarantino as tarantino will just have characters die like you could spend an hour and a half with christoph waltz and then he's dead and that's it and you, you're not going to go back to him it's over that's what they do with new in this film they killed his mom with like a shotgun so all you see is like oh, a yeah. blown out face mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah um, I know you're on a real, uh, Lorenzo, you're on a real Ebert criticism, uh, <laughs> kick right now. I always, so I wanted to, I wanted to bring this up. I have no respect for anybody from the city of Chicago, by the way. Let me oh, just get that out there yeah. right now. <laughs> uh, but, uh, he said something sort of funny about this, uh, which he said that it's one of the best made bad movies he'd ever seen. Hmm. It looks great. It hurdles through its paces and it's well acted. It's only flaw is that it's disgusting. And like yeah. the, the, the okay. scene with the dead mother sort of like reminds me of that. But uh, it, I, I don't think for as wrong as he often is, I don't think he's really wrong about any of that stuff there. And it, mm -hmm. and it is disgusting. Like that seems really gross, but it's, it's cool. You know, yeah. that's like, extremely generous for Ebert. Ebert was <laughs> Look, if you look up any horror movie review of Ebert's from the 80s or 90s or any time, really, um, he just will reject it because it's a horror mm -hmm. film. He thinks they're completely unnecessary and vulgar. Uh, he was a prude, Ebert yeah. was, you know. Um, but here's the thing about Ebert. I think a lot of people get the impression that I don't like Ebert because I make the memes. But I, I love Roger Ebert. And I think his opinions, even if they're wildly bad at times, are still interesting because he's coming at it from an interesting place he's a real um, critic yes absolutely um and cisco's fine too but not uh, he's you know, <laughs> god rest his soul but i wasn't have... i wasn't even a, i wasn't even aware of ebert until his face became funny uh oh, like that's the, you know when he go, i when know what you mean by when, funny that's very <laughs> yeah, spirited huh? when he when he got his what throat cancer or whatever and, and he, he just looked like, like a Kermit puppet the frog yeah that was bad <laughs> yeah i was like oh who's this guy because i didn't grow up watching whatever cisco or whatever because of my third world country-ness i guess one of but, the uh, worst things that came out about uh from that the cancer is that uh ebert was like a food cuck after yeah. that he was like i want to watch my wife eat my favorite meal in front of my oh. face he wouldn't do that <laughs> so um you know she would talk about it with like uh you know of love or whatever in the documentary but it's like was he Oprah, getting hard yeah. over that was he were getting like all frothed up watching his wife eat a fucking bean burrito <laughs> What Ebert watching to mukbang? Is that what you yes. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. But well, um, and he also wrote uh, 
What's that movie called? The Super Beyond Vixens? the Valley of the Dolls. Uh, beneath, beneath the Valley of the Ultra Vixens. Wasn't that him? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He did yeah. And he's just like, oh, oh, cool. It's a movie where uh, <laughs> dumb sluts for this from the seventies were like, oh, and people come look at my tits. That's weird. Ha ha. Here are my tits. Like he that's that. what those movies are. He did yeah. that and had the nerve to call Blue Velvet misogynistic because he thought <laughs> David Lynch was taking advantage of Isab- Isabella Rossellini on that film by having her get naked. Yeah. So clearly he had plenty Ooh. of blind spots. Um, there's, Ooh, I mean, someone's weirder. been uploading episodes galore of uh, Siskel and Ebert from their 70s run up until uh, Roper took over. And um, there's certainly a lot of interesting takes in that because everybody says essentially the same thing now. You can watch anybody on YouTube And they'll give you some variation of like the generally accepted take of like, well, this is good. This is bad or whatever. Nobody has the balls to say, you know, if something's critically well received, for example, a lot of people like that new Macbeth film that Joel Cohen did. Right. I think it's Joel Cohen. Maybe it was Ethan Cohen. Mm -hmm. Um, I watched that. I was just like, this is this is just a boring piece of shit film. This it feels like a lesser Zack Snyder's Justice League with the four by three in the black and white. (laughs) I, of course, yeah. I'm, I'm tired uh, yeah. of this. All right. I mean, I, I, I mean, I don't, I don't dis, I don't disagree. I, I was not thrilled when I watched it. Um, I think a lot of people are giving it praise for the cinematography, even though um, it, it looks like green screen for most. It does. Of it it right. that's exactly how it looks. That's exactly yeah. how it looks. It looks. People are like the visual style of this. It looks like it's like no, it no. Like, this is this is poor. It's like, oh my God, Denzel Washington is going on a fucking speech for five minutes with a weird accent. Acting, that's amazing. Cool. It's like, All right, go go do no, that at a theater. Go not. do that on Broadway. I'll show up. Yeah, I exactly. Watch CG birds fly across a fake yeah. screen. Or what, well, Francis McDormand was looking and, down and, at him. And uh, it, it seems like uh, just because of who, who whichever Cohen brothers uh, brother is. Um, I, 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 the fact that it's uh, four by three and the fact that it doesn't look like a regular movie, I guess, it's what, what most people talk about positively about it. But I was bored by it. It felt like, I'm, I'm sure we're not going to make an episode of it, but uh, it felt you like tried. it was just I actors. Said, Hell keep... no, we're not talking about yeah. that movie for, for an entire episode. <laughs> <laughs> all right so let, let me just do my short review it felt like a like a theater actor's dream because yeah. it was just actors giving speeches for like five ten minutes like just playing off each other but the the interesting or like the cool cinematography just looked like green screen like it just looked mm-hmm. shitty like I, I was not into the look of it at all uh and uh even though the the it, uh, there's some shots kind of look like the now, Seven Seal, or like, you know, those old movies where they're trying to do something experimental or cool looking. This didn't look good. It looked cheap. It looked like a, like uh, someone that maybe discovered what green screen was. And it's like, oh, let, let me just do this to make it look old or, you know, whatever his thinking was. But I, I was bored. But I fast forwarded a lot, which is kind of a, a sin, I guess, if you're watching a movie. But I was just fucking bored because I hate theater kids like i'm not a fan <laughs> of wow. I'm, I'm not a, i'm not a fucking fan of you uh, pontificating for five minutes while the camera is literally here on your face and it's like oh can you give me anything Look, I, I completely agree that? with you but in defense of the movie, it's shakespeare Hans. it's macbeth okay but then i, I mean I, I guess i'm not the target audience then because i, I was bored <laughs> no, i was just like, you don't like i was just like a denzel, denzel washington looks like a homeless man that's just like saying shit coming like just coming out of his mouth with a very uh narrow camera on his face and it's like how long are you gonna hold that shot for this stinks uh and 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 i think um I watch a lot of experimental movies and experimental videos that people make. Uh, and even though a lot of them don't make sense, at least there's something interesting uh, visually about them that I'm like, all right, well, maybe I think the writing is shit, but at least visually looks cool. This was just, uh, yeah, let me just uh, say a monologue for, for a while. And then the camera is going to stay on my face. And this is very gripping and very, and I was just fucking bored by it. 
Yeah, it's not. It's look, a lot of people say it's good. I don't think it's good. I think it's, I think it's exactly what you just said, Hans. You took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah, um, theater people suck. Theater <laughs> kids. <laughs> on a on a similar note, because you just reminded me of actors delivering long speeches. I just watched Abel Ferrara's new film that he shot during lockdown called Zeros and Ones. And this is uh, also a total turd, but most people seem to be saying that. Uh, it looks like he went out with an iPhone camera and they he's got as props in the movie. I'm pretty sure he just shot with the camera. Uh, the same camera we used to shoot Mass State Lottery. And there's so many weird just th things that don't make sense. And it's like he, he has at one point, there's a picture of Ethan Hawke who's the star of the movie uh, with two characters. And he plays two, he plays twins and the twins in the photo are a, a Photoshop picture of him from before sunrise. And then later on from like Gattaca in this photo, clearly just a like red carpet photo. And then he has a scene where he's having sex with a woman and people are just watching. And then it's revenge porn or something. I don't even know what the hell was happening in that movie. That was another horrible film from 2021, but Anyway, Punisher. Well, good to, I guess good to know that <laughs> Abel Ferrara is still horny in 2021. Oh, he certainly is, more than ever. <laughs> Abel Ferrara would have directed the best Punisher film. If you got him in 1985 <laughs> to direct the Punisher and you threw in Tom Berenger as the Punisher, that could have been oh, fun. Mm. Yeah. That would have been perfect. Um, so th this Netflix Punisher show, I haven't finished it. I really enjoyed the first season of the show. I thought it stuck its landing for the most part. A lot of those shows don't. I tuned into season two. I'm not really as into it, but I thought it started out fine. Why I don't consider John Bernthal the best Punisher. I think he's the best lead in a Punisher show, mm. but his, his version of the character, to me, only occasionally feels like the Frank Castle that I have um, an awareness of. Because the thing with John Bernthal is, and for me, once I noticed this, I couldn't unnotice it. Whenever he's playing a tough guy in a film, like Wolf of Wall Street or um, Walking Dead or any of these shows, what he's really doing is just being Robert De Niro from the late 70s to early 90s. He does the same, you know, that kind of Muppet mm. face too. He's got the same cadence. And it's like, all right, I just, I, I just saw what you're doing here. He's a very good actor. He does that well. He's good in King Richard playing the uh, feminine tennis coach. It was like, whoa, this is a very different kind of role for John. And he's great in that. But um, I, I enjoy him the most. But I, for me anyway, I think Ray Stevenson is the best Punisher. Hmm. I, that's interesting. I, I, I'll have to watch it with that sort of uh, idea of the way he does tough guy acting in mind. Um, I like it. The The reason that I like him the most as the Punisher. So I think the, I also like what you said about him and, and Frank Castle, but I think that the Punisher on the Netflix show is sort of like a little bit further post like family identity Punisher in a lot of ways. Like he's, he's, he's less Frank Castle. He's more the Punisher. And that's sort of like one of the central things that they go with on the show. Mm. Um, and, and, and so I understand that part of it a little bit. But I, I love the way that Bernthal carries damage. Like, I love the way he gets hurt. I love the way that, like, the show has him get hurt. And I love the way that he grits through that stuff as the Punisher. Like, I, it's, it's the kind of thing that they, you always wonder whether or not they're going to do, like, a, a movie with him in place. But I just can't see them. I can't see them. None, none of the real, like, big Marvel movies do they have any of the, protagonists really take damage you know even when they kill half of them they just like fade away and yeah sometimes their costumes get torn and they get a little bit of blood or whatever but we're talking about like Bernthal like limping down a street like dragging dead limbs behind him you know like grunting well, like a pig that scene on on the daredevil show where he just fights in uh jail that's great oh. like that's uh it's yeah. it's an uh, amazing scene Seen, but i haven't seen the, the punisher show i think uh by the time it came out i was kind of like all right superheroes are kind of like uh, uh, so i haven't that's, that's where it. i was at but, but, i i went back to it um maybe because of the show we did or maybe just right before the show uh because i was just looking for something to watch i've been watching a lot of shows i wouldn't normally watch the past year and a half 
And uh, I was pleasantly surprised by that. And listen, I didn't enjoy the Daredevil show. I didn't, I mean, I kind of like Jessica Jones uh, for a while. And mm-hmm. then I, that fell off for me. I never got into Luke Cage or Iron Fist. I, did, did he show up in the Defenders, the Punisher? Mm, I don't think so. If he, he maybe he had like a cameo or something. I couldn't even, I couldn't stick with Defenders. No. It was bad. I, I love Iron Fist as a comic book character and what they did to him in that series after two episodes, which is as long as I lasted. I was like, I'm... I'm all right. Uh, didn't care for Jessica Jones either or Luke Cage. Uh, I feel like those those characters are, well, I don't know about anything about Jessica Jones, but uh, Luke Cage and, and Iron Fist deserve more of a, like a street thing, uh, like a darker, I feel like, uh, tone to them than what they got from Netflix. So I was never really interested in it. But at the same time, uh, I think I've been done with like superhero shit since then. Because uh, even the, like, Hawkeye is one of my favorite comic book characters of all time. Uh, and I still haven't seen the series because it's just, like, it feels so sanitized. And so, like, I, like, what are they going? Oh, he's a mentor to a, the girl Hawkeye. It's like, I couldn't give a fuck less. Um, and especially because it's Disney Plus, too. So you know that there's not going to do anything edgy or anything interesting. It's just yeah. going to be very family friendly and sanitized. So I'm like, I, I, I don't care. Uh, but at, at this point, like I did it like the two, uh, I think Daredevil is three seasons, right? Uh, I think so. Yeah. I saw the first two. And then after that, I was kind of like, all right, I, I, I think I started watching. Uh, uh, well, I watched like two episodes of Fire Fist and I was like, cool. So at this point, I'm just like kind of done with anything that has to do with superheroes. So I'm very kind of out of the loop with that. Uh, the Punisher series, I have a couple of friends that have told me that it's, it's actually really well done and really cool. So I might have to check that out. But yeah, I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not on that train anymore. I feel <laughs> like I'm, I haven't even watched that Spider-Man movie that everyone loves. I don't care yeah. to watch it. I'm kind of like I I uh, I don't like uh, what's the actor's name? The little boy that's probably like 30 something, but it still looks like a little Jonathan boy. Jonathan Taylor Spider-Man. Thomas. <laughs> no no he's like 50 yeah. now <laughs> no but uh th- this kid that are trying to make him into an action star uh from spider-man that now he's playing uh the uncharted character and he's like Tom he still Holland. looks like a boy yeah yeah he still yeah. looks like a boy that does not look like an action star at all even though he's probably closer to my age than i than I think. No, but, he's not. Um, no, you're old. Don't, don't even try and. <laughs> <leave> <laughs> <your age down. laughs> All right, but I, I just don't, don't. Hey, he's fine as Spider Man, I guess, but I just don't. I don't care. Like I, I was telling watch, him that I'm. I'm did it, either of you see well, uh, the the latest Spider Man movie? Nope. No. no? I, I saw the first one, and that's that's as far as I've gotten with this no. whole in Spider Man. It's gonna it, take a lot to get me back into the theater for a Marvel thing. I, I didn't go to the theater to see it. I watched a, a bootleg cam. Someone snuck into a movie theater. <laughs> and I got to say, um, for a Marvel thing, like a modern Marvel thing, probably the most enjoyable, but obviously it's entirely uh, based upon liking the old shit that came before that had nothing to do with that. They do throw in the, the Daredevil from the Netflix show. Uh, at one point so but i can't imagine they're ever gonna pick up john bernthal's punisher again it just doesn't fit disney at all i i I don't think they have any interest in in doing that or even if they did like an adult line i think the adult line would be pg-13 i don't even i I don't even think you'd get anything uh like really gritty out of that unfortunately well you just said the the deadpool thing is going to be what pg-13 or something so it's like okay so you're just like why do it then same with the 2004 punisher it's like then don't do that character there's a lot of other characters you can do but was you that pick one the... pg-13 i think so. it felt pg-13 uh, i don't think it was i think they went half-assed on it and they didn't need to because they thought they were going to get a pg-13 rating and then wound up with an r maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm misremembering well, but but what is the most violent thing you see in that movie them ripping uh piercings off that guy which they don't even really show they just show it like stretching you know yeah i don't know Uh, nothing comes to mind for that uh the part where he like grabs a hold of the eyebrow ring and he's like this is a special one isn't it and you're just like (laughs) i think the most grotesque was what was it it was john panette cooking (laughs) Um. (laughs) because like on the on war zone they say fuck like 
20 times before the first five minutes with that Italian family that are having dinner. Uh, so you know what you're getting into. This uh, Thomas Jane movie, like, is, is very sanitized. It's very, like, then don't fucking do this character. Go for, go make a Jubilee fucking movie, you know, Jubilee. where it can be. <laughs> yeah, for I don't think they put her in extra. <laughs> <laughs> They should have. But yeah, like if you want to do a, it's like the same thing with uh, whenever they try to do the Wolverine movies. And it's like, oh, this is PG-13. It's like, then don't fucking do it. Well, you know, I just realized a- we are one short. Uh, there was a fourth Punisher movie. Now, this is an animated feature uh, oh. made in Japan where okay. uh, the Punisher and Black Widow team up. So there's Do they have uh, Pokemon. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's right. Um, it's a it's a direct to video superhero anime by Madhouse. Now I, I do recall that Marvel got in the anime game for a second. Now you take a look at the DVD oh, yeah. cover here. It doesn't look like anime whatsoever. Can we just pull up a quick trailer to this, Hans, uh, and, huh. and see what is going on with the the Avengers Confidential Black Widow and Punisher uh, 83 minute feature who voices the Punisher in this movie a Japanese man okay uh, <laughs> they got in the dub uh, uh, Jennifer Carpenter from Dexter there's a lot of overlap with Dexter and the Punisher here uh, wow. voices Black Widow she didn't age well she looked real old on the new Dexter yeah yeah Wait a minute. Hold on. Pause this. Pause it. Pause it. Pause it right now. Huh? Does Disney own this? Is this Disney's channel? We haven't been able to know. post any of the new episodes because it gets copyright. <laughs> Looks like I see a on. Sony thing. Yeah. Sony. Oh, yeah. Eh, that's 50 50. Can we just check? Like, can you fast forward to where the hey, Punisher just... shows up just so we can see him? Oh, okay. Sure. Hold on. Uh... Oh, there it hey, is. What, is, what is Kern Club? What is that, Hans? What is that? Peanut what butter it? checks you're ordering online? What are these bookmarks of yours? <laughs> We're gone. Yeah. I like how it's just t- Tucker Carlson <laughs> clips and you're recommended. This is, <laughs> this is the first time that I've ever left my fucking bookmarks open, you piece of shit. Yes. It's you a got Star Wars fan Peanut films Butter in here? Cookies. You should have went to private before doing this, Hans. <laughs> Anyway, this movie looks like it's great. (laughs) Were you guys aware of the fact that um, they made uh, Marvel characters into also anime, but uh, they were like Beyblades so that a little boy could have like the characters. That's huge. Are you not aware of that? Uh, Hold on, let me see if I can find it. Can Uh, we just take a look at the Beyblade? I want to see that real quick. uh, Is there uh, who would be popping up on there? You know, this Doctor Strange movie that's coming out that Sam Raimi is directing. I've heard that Tobey Maguire will come back for that. I've heard that uh, Hugh Jackman's in on that. Hmm. Maybe, maybe we'll see. Maybe Dolph Lundgren. I think (laughs) I I don't. I mean, we're living in a world where uh, they've clearly run out of ideas. So they're just like, yep. All the universes can just combine and uh, we'll put Michael Keaton in the new Flash movie and then we'll shoot four four movies with him and we'll include some of the characters from the Ben Affleck Batman and nobody will think anything of it. So let's see this. What is this called? Marvel it's Wars? Disc War. Disc War. This is already really cool. Mm. Oh. Okay. I guess they're more like Pokemon to that Beyblade, right? I think so. Thor here. I guess he owns Thor. Yeah. Captain America. Yeah, you know, this is another thing too with the modern Marvel films is they they hate their heroes wearing any sort of uh, mask. Everything oh, shows yellow. their face. Yellow Jacket is a weird pick. No, 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 no. If you did Ultimate Avengers back in 2000-something, she was a part of the lineup. Yeah, this is just Pokemon. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. 
But then there's like an extended, it's not just the characters, it's like an extended roster of them. I guess it was, I don't know if it was successful or not, but uh, cool. that's how they were trying to market it in like, when, when was this? 2000, was this before Iron uh, Man? 2014. Oh, no, it wasn't. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> so what, what was the consensus here on that? Is, I think it's fair to say Netflix's Punisher show is probably the best incarnation, maybe. Um, First season anyway. Yeah, the first season of it, I think, is probably top tier. Warzone is second. Um, season two, oh. would you? How, how would you rank that? If you're, if you're consider, let's consider the seasons their own films, right? Mm -hmm. We throw those in with the three movies that exist. How would you rank that? Uh, I would go season one, Warzone. Probably, in all seriousness, season two, uh, eighty nine Punisher. 2004 Punisher. That sounds right to me. Yeah. Now it's entirely possible I changed my mind on that. The season two falls apart in like the last episode or two, but I don't know. I the Dolph Lundgren Punisher I thought was fun, but I I, I thought it was fun just as I noticed parts of it, you know, and not like the entire consistent thing. But it was I mean it was much shorter than that Thomas Jane one. I think yeah. <laughs> it was an easier watch at least. It felt shorter. Yeah. It's not really one of those movies that you uh, would tell anyone to watch, I guess, because it's 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 very niche. Like it's it's got very uh, particular things, I guess. That if you're if you're a weirdo like us, would like it. But I don't think it's very accessible for most people. Same yeah. with Warzone too. Uh, it's just in a different way, and that's the problem with 2004. That it feels like it's trying to be accessible for a, like a wider audience, but it's a character that shouldn't be because of his moral compass and like his actions and everything. So that's why it feels so like such a lukewarm, such a kind of lame punisher. Cause it's like, you're not even punishing anyone. So what's your name? <laughs> you know, it should not be punisher that doesn't punish. Uh, uh, but yeah, yeah. Well, what does, what do you think they're going to do anything with this character now that Disney owns it? No be surprised it's it's it'd be it'd be very hard if they're gonna keep to the idea of disney plus like not having our rated content if they're gonna like really stick to disney branding all on all the marvel stuff i'd be surprised i mean they're they're having a hard time figuring out how to make x-men work you know much yeah, less that's a good point much less something that, like this uh you know you can get away with it with deadpool because he's goofy you don't have to like have him losing limbs and like cutting people's heads off. Like he, he can just crack jokes, but right. they, they, they don't have any outsider story, any real outsider storylines at all. You know, um, they can't figure X-Men out. I doubt they'll figure anything out for Punisher. I, the, the TV series will probably be as far as it goes, but who knows? My suspicion is that if he does come back at all, uh, it's going to be they'll reboot like Daredevil or something for Disney Plus, and maybe you'll have like a cameo or a very small mm. role on that until this whole structure somehow falls apart, which mm. doesn't seem like it's going to happen for about 40 years. <laughs> I think I think it's very safe, right? People love those Disney Plus original shows, so I, I don't think that's going to change for a minute. I, the movies might disappear. We'll see. Have you guys, um, have you guys watched Peacemaker yet? No, I haven't. That, that looks that looks kind of. No, a couple of people whose opinions I I respect say it's it's like pretty funny that John Cena is like appropriately hammy and like whatever, but I don't I don't need to watch it. Yeah, I'm half inch like okay. So the the Suicide Squad movie I thought was better than what I was expecting. Mm -hmm. I was also uh, very drunk though at the time of watching, yeah, so I, no. I might have <laughs> might have just been my mood. You know, I'm, I'm a pretty happy drunk myself, but uh, I thought that uh, John Cena was probably the funniest part of the movie, you know, and I, I didn't mind his character. And I learned that Jody Hill is a is a, I, he wrote some of the episodes either discreetly and he I, th I think directed at least one episode. Uh, and I enjoy his work quite a bit. He did observe and report foot fist way yeah. uh, episodes of vice principles and he spouted down. So he's verifiably funny as far as I'm concerned. Mm. James Gunn is kind of fair weather. Some, I, I feel like he's good as often as he is bad, um, yeah. especially lately. I don't know. I might give it a watch, if, especially if it's only one season. 
eight episodes or something. I don't know. I, it, it, it's hardly, uh, you know, the worst offense in the comic book genre. Much more interested in that stuff than I am in any more like Disney series. Have you have either of you guys watched uh, Doom Patrol? No, I no. I was gonna check out uh, that and Titans a while back because I was like, oh yeah, there's just like these shows where all these characters are existing in live action and the budget looks not bad for that kind of series. Mm-hmm. It looks like it mm-hmm. on a, like a TNT drama level mm-hmm. as opposed to CW. Right. Uh, they seem to be gritty or whatever. Although there was a clip from Titans that I saw of uh, yes, the Robin one where he where he fuck goes like that man. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh. Well, that's the thing that happened with Peacemakers for me. Like I saw they seen that people were posting on Twitter about John Zena being like, well, Batman doesn't kill people, and I kill people, or whatever the fuck. If Batman kill people, then crime wouldn't be as bad in Gotham or whatever. And I was just like, what is is this like a like a forum argument from 10 years ago about how Batman should kill everyone instead, but it's John Cena delivering it. So 10 years like, is being generous. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so right I was like, now. ah, <laughs> it was like, that's kind of a, uh, I don't know. That's bad. James Gunn. That's what it felt like. I, I like uh, um, guardians. I like what he's done with guardians of the galaxy. This felt very much like self-aware James Gunn, which I don't like at all. You know, where it's very much like, hey, this is what people say on the internet. So now my character is going to say this. So it's like the same jokes and everything. It's kind of like, I oh, uh, don't well, need Self-awareness to in general, that. I think, is a, is a humor tactic has wore, worn out its welcome. I think that time is very over. And the yeah. companies that are producing these and hiring writers aren't going to find out for like another six years. And we'll see something different. But yeah, I, that's very played out. Uh, it's been played out since about Deadpool. And uh, yes. I, I have very little patience for that sort of thing nowadays. I don't, I don't like the where it's like clearly an over-the-top thing and they know what it is and it's a little tongue-in-cheek. I'd rather they just play it sincere. I think that age yeah. is much better too. Mm-hmm. Even if it's corny or even if it's like very cartoony like Warzone, it's like I'd rather them believe in what they're saying and that's just their world instead of uh the um ray what's it ray winston ray what what's his name ray stevenson, stevenson? Uh, ray donovan Be- <laughs> ray, ray, ray donovan being like hey i'm gonna go punishment i'm gonna go punish them huh like i uh, fuck that you know i'd rather them being like all right well i'm this ridiculous character in this world it, it ages better like you said instead of like I'm aware of the joke, guys. Hey, I'm part of the joke. Because it goes back to like your strength thing of like, that's not okay. That's not fun then. I can't make fun of you anymore because you're aware of it. So that that kind of sucks. And, Mm -hmm. you know, we get we get a lot of that now where it's like, hey, uh, what's the joke uh, going on Twitter about this character? Well, now he's going to say it. Hey, he said the meme, guys. This is like, fuck you. Yeah, that was Willem Dafoe and Spider-Man. They made sure to do that. which was it, honestly, he he did it fine. It was not. It was not. I'm the juggernaut bitch from X Men Three. Oh, that, that, I, that. I point. I point to that line all the time as the moment that comic book movies were doomed. Oh. Like when we start making like meme jokes in movie scripts, it's fucking over. It's done. What and, the Black Panther one? Uh, what are those? Right. Oh yeah, that the shoes. That. Yeah. There's a damn oh, Daniel. Oh. Remember that was a meme. Damn Daniel. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Well, Do- Doom Patrol is interesting. A little. It might be worth a, a glance. Not every episode is good, but there's some cool overarching stuff. It's based off of a, a Grant Morrison property, so like it's weird as fuck at times. Uh, and it, it's like a it's a it's a good sort of counterpoint to all of the overproduced Marvel stuff. They're doing a good job with all these DC series being unique in and of themselves, and also like a, a, a solid storytelling counterpoint to everything else we're getting. Uh, th- that has a good cast to it too. That has what mm-hmm. Timothy Dalton, right, or Roger uh, Moore, one of the Bonds, Roger, Roger Moore, Fraser. Uh, Brendan Fraser. Uh, so Alan Tudyk plays the the villain and he there's there's a couple episodes with him in it where he just nails it like which is really interesting because i've never been a super huge fan of him like uh you know as like a guy who never really stepped outside of anything uh that joss whedon was directing right yeah Um, he's one of his go-tos 
Yeah, he's he's very cool on the episodes of Doom Patrol that he's on. Is that so? I posted an image someone sent to me. Uh, I received it via text of uh, Brandon Fraser. Hold, uh, he has a huge belly in this photo, uh, <laughs> holding like a bag of chips and a six pack of like soda or something. I got to see if I can find <laughs> this thing. And I, I feel like it's it. from that show. Is it not? Yeah, it might be. Yeah, man. I thought he was just a robot and did a voice on, on there. He is, but he wasn't always. Ah, so here's what I suspect, because he's popping up in a lot of HBO Max stuff, and he's going to be in Batgirl, which I'm kind of excited. That's the one. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. All right. What a hunk. Nice. He's so happy there. Man. Mm-hmm. The leather I've jacket really guy. makes it. Yeah, I love a leather I've been jacket that guy on a fat guy. So many times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've uh, that smile. Yeah. I've um, been there. A bag of hot Cheetos and a beer. He definitely has a contract <laughs> with HBO Max, which is probably why he's showing up on the show as himself. Um, they're just trying to fit him into any movie they can. He was in mm-hmm. that Soderbergh one. And he's fine in that, but he looks kind of ridiculous with the top hat and the jacket. He kind of looks like Fat Man from Metal Gear Solid. Um, <laughs> and he's going to be playing, I don't know how they're going to do this, I guess with modern magic, CG. Mm. Uh, he's going to play Firefly in the new Batgirl movie, which is a guy who gets around on like a jet pack, remember, and burns buildings down because he's a weirdo fireman or something. Great. Are they are they gonna do like they did with uh, Scarlett Johansson in that Avengers movie when she was pregnant and they just get her face into someone else's body, but he's pregnant with fat? Probably, but there's <laughs> there's a shot of they have. I mean, I I've seen uh, on set footage where he's like the cool guy walking away from the fire, but he's in his Brendan Fraser body, you know. So I don't know. Maybe we're gonna do the liquefy tool on him or something. <laughs> We'll, we'll see. I'm very honestly, I'm very interested in that back girl. A lot of people would dismiss it saying, Oh, that costume looks like shit. I think it looks fine. It looks like the new bat girl with the uh purple leather zip up. It's, it's whatever. Purple yellow. Um, yeah. The yeah. Gotham City they built over in Scotland looks ki- like similar enough to the Burton Gotham City without uh you know sucking its tit too much. And uh, they got a good cast. They got Michael Keaton for that. They got Frazier and they got uh, J.K. Simmons. So hmm. I'm, I, I'll, I'm probably more excited. I have more faith in that maybe than I do for that Flash movie that's coming out. Oh, that's, yeah. That's, that's going to reshape the DC universe, that Flash movie. That's going to reset <laughs> I hate everything. how you just put it. Like, it's <laughs> <laughs> like something to be excited for. God. <laughs> Yeah, mm. I love how that guy just got away with like beating girls up in like Iceland or he whatever. Fucking the fuck choke on, that girl. She was like, "Oh, I love you. Could I have your autograph?" And he paused for a second, thought about it, and fucking attacked her. And they just covered it up. They hit it's it like, just like the Ryan Seacrest groping a hairdresser accusation. No, no, no. We got a rock in New Year's Eve to shoot in a couple of weeks. We can't have that. <laughs> they will, Jeremy. Jer, who's the uh, Hawkeye? Jeremy, uh, not Jeremy Renner. Renner. Uh, Jeremy Renner. Uh, his thing was, oh, I'm doing coke with seven, my 17 year old babysitter. I'm fucking all these young girls in front of my wife. And there was a hit piece, and they were like, "Nah, we got Hawkeye coming out in a couple of months." It goes away. <laughs> it's Tom Hardy's a tidy whitey's pictures from MySpace, and it's like, "Oh no, but he's not. He's not that gay oh, yeah. guy that was posting oh, about yeah, 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 yeah. or whatever." He, was just, he loved <laughs> yeah. talking about being bisexual <laughs> yeah. and stuff, and then all of a sudden, yeah. "Nah, what are you talking about? Nah, oh. that was just a phase. That was <laughs> David Bowie. Bain. Everybody's but buying Dan. college." <laughs> Uh, yeah everybody's by when they're smoking crack seems to be the case (laughs) um anyway are you guys looking forward to anything comic book related that's that's coming down the pike is there i mean is Uh, there anything interesting like what's the like off kilter stuff i so i don't know if i mentioned this before i am a strict no trailer guy mm. i uh i have been doing it for about 10 years it's great uh makes me enjoy movies a lot more so i I will walk out of a theater when they come on and then I go back in when the feature starts. So like, I, I, I try to know as little as possible about what's coming as I can. What, what has been your, what would you say is the ratio for that working out to not working out for you? Oh, like 90% works out. It's awesome. Interesting. Yeah. I, I I've calibrated my taste pretty well to like my friends. So like when certain friends like something, I know it's going to be good when other friends like something, I can pretty safely ignore it uh and uh i just go off of 
you know, the critics that I like and the theaters that I like. I know that like I can go to the, I live in Portland. We've got a really nice theater here, the Hollywood theater. Uh, and I can just like see whatever's at the Hollywood pretty safely. Um, and uh, it's great. Uh, so I have no idea what's coming comic book wise. I know about the doctor. I know about the Marvel stuff just because you can't escape it. Right. Well, but, they put out you... that chart that shows you the next five years of what Fuck. they're doing. Wait, uh, are you are you guys not excited about that Pennyworth series that's coming out? What? That's four years old. Huh? <laughs> that was that was fucking Is ten it? years ago. And oh, it went yeah. to like it went to some no name <laughs> yeah. network epics. You know who has that? That's like uh, that's the same hmm. level as like Pluto or Tubi. Tubi. Um, I guess I, I guess it's a new season that's coming out there because I'm looking at an oh, upcoming wow. thing. You have, you have Batman. You have uh, Moon Knight, uh, Morbius, another Doctor Strange movie. There's an animated Super Pets movie with The Rock and Gaming Heart. Are you kidding me? That's huge! No. Wow. <laughs> uh, there's uh, another Thor movie, Black Adam uh spider-man across the spider-verse is it Flash another movie it's the other taika watiti thor yeah yeah yes yeah. which has christian bale in it because he's ready to mm. lose some integrity i guess unfortunately. <laughs> um i'm there's kind a, of... a second black panther movie where it's all about the sister right mm -hmm. yeah it takes the god the aquaman any kids yeah. who love that black panther movie <laughs> And don't know that like the actor, or maybe just vaguely know that the actor died. they're gonna feel so you know bait and switched when they see in the theater that yeah. sequel and there's no Black Panther in it. Um uh, what was I gonna say? The, the Aquaman. Uh, let's let's back it up. So there's a new into the Spider-Verse movie coming out. Are, are you like yeah. a Spider-Man fan at all? Uh I like it. I like the first uh Spider-Verse movie. Um it's a uh, it's it was cool for an animated full length, like. It was fun to see in a theater. Um, got in a fight at the theater. That's the people who were like at their phone the whole time, like in oh. the theater. Great movie going experience. <laughs> Strongly recommend. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, that, that's essentially my take. I think it's one of the better Spider-Man movies. I, I, yeah, I yeah. surprisingly enjoyed it uh, quite a bit. And this new one is probably going to be shit. But the thing I think is interesting about it that might mean nothing to nobody else. I think you can kind of see where they're going the minor shit like the animated features are usually a telltale sign of wherever the bigger films are going to lead to mm. and um what the new one is going to do is introduce the ben riley spider-man who um i don't know if you know anything about that that's a clone so there's a mm. bunch of um clones that popped up in like the mid 90s spider-man yeah. run where i think peter parker died or something and ben riley's the future spider-man kind of a bat was it spider-man 2099 or was it I, uh... I think so no it's yeah. it's the one with a vest different one hmm. yeah it's the one that has like a oh like a yeah, yeah, light yeah blue vest yeah right. i know what like you're the about. very thick uh like the web shooters i guess mm -hmm. like very thick yeah mm -hmm. So that's where they're probably going to go. So, you know, instead of reversing time, every other film to bring back whoever just died, they're going to do, I think, clones uh, to come. But I have no interest in anything that Marvel has going on. Uh, I couldn't yeah. be bothered with whatever Sony even has lined up, you know, because the Venom sequel was horrible. Morbius doesn't look good. Um, they have something else. Be Hulk. Who? Be Hulk. It's going to be a TV series, apparently. You got to stop playing uh, games, Hans, bringing up She-Hulk on this show. I, I'm, <laughs> no, it's it's starring the girl from uh, that clone show. Uh, uh, what's her name? I Ta just Tatiana. mentioned clones. You're making this up. Anyway. Tatiana Maslany. No, hold sure. on. That show called uh, Orphan Black, I guess. Oh, wow. That's, that's another show. show I haven't. That's another thing from 2016. I haven't thought about since Orphan <laughs> Black. Damn. Yeah. Well, that girl, that girl's in it. Uh, there's going to be a Miss Marvel something. There's an I Am Group series uh, or Great. shorts. Apparently. Right, um, I don't care about Marvel. Let's put, push Marvel aside. Uh, what, okay. what, what with DC, we've got Flash. We've got Batgirl. We've got Shazam. Yeah, I guess. There's a Blue um, Beetle thing coming out oh uh, yeah there. they they've been trying to do that that ain't happening yeah that'll be tough that they gotta just put that to rest um that's that's in the same category as like iron fist i remember they were talking about doing iron fist as a movie with ray park back in like oh, 2002 yeah. 2000 for a long time that was in development blue beetle same deal um they they had plenty of ideas for it that's probably just not gonna happen are you guys into, joker 2 
What's that? A Joker two? Is that going to happen? Do you think? Maybe. Uh, I hope not. I rewatched Joker. I thought it, I mostly held up. I thought it was pretty good still. Yeah. That new Batman movie. Uh, I'm interested. I'm uh, eh, uh. now. You would know Frank because you don't watch trailers, but yeah. it is really right. uh, sucking David Fincher's dick big mm-hmm. time. Yeah, um, I don't which, know too much about it. I'll see it. I, I mean, there's not for I. I like most of the Batman movies, honestly. Like there aren't too many misses in in the Batman film catalog. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I'll give it a shot. Yeah, I want to I, see Paul Dano being another weirdo again because I <laughs> like him when he plays weirdos, which is yeah. pretty much in every movie. But yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't mind the it. cast at all. I think I think the cast is fine. I just got a bad vibe about this Batman movie for some reason. Hmm. I don't Matt know. Yeah, uh, yeah, he doesn't impress me as a director. I mean, I didn't mind those Planet of the Ape movies, but or even I, the hmm. Let the Right One In remake that he did people uh, i think people were really unfair to that one the remake i think yeah. it's i i it's not bad no it's, it's just got, unnecessary it is it's, unnecessary. it's not bad but it's yeah. like why just, it's well just shot read subtitles it's well acted yeah. it has a good atmosphere to it but it's yeah if you watch the original you just kind of what's the point uh but he's yeah. not a bad director i just don't know if he has a distinct enough style where i would be like excited to see his take on batman and Christopher Nolan, even though he's kind of become void of style in the years since doing The Dark Knight and all those films, um, you check out his early movies. They're pretty stylized. Mm-hmm. Uh, Memento, yeah. uh, Following, Insomnia. Those are pretty solid films. Even Batman Begins has a lot of visual flair to it before he decides, I guess we're just going to make everything heat. You know, Michael Mann's Heat, that's going to be the next two movies. And then, but with gonna... time going backwards. Right, right, right. So he's just what, kind what of a doodle, uh... doodle bug. What? Doodle bug? Doodle bug. That ain't a superhero. Yeah. You're but making up short. all these lies tonight, Hans, to try and fool me. I know you're up to <laughs> doodle bug. I keep looking over at my shelf of comics to see, like, I, I'm always curious, like, why more like Vertigo stuff doesn't sort of get greenlit, you know, like why there mm-hmm. aren't, there's got to be money in it. There has to be some money in adapting some of these like weirder properties. Like where's, where's like a Transmetropolitan or. Well, are, are they doing a Sandman, uh, like a series Sandman, I think? I think so. Yeah. For one of the services. Uh, right. Audible currently is promoting like an A-list cast for their Sandman audiobook series. But mm. I, haven't, I mean, I think Joseph Gordon-Levitt was supposed to play uh, the the pro- uh, protagonist on the Sandman TV show. No, they're casting. They're casting. Uh, they're casting a show for one of them right now, right? Because they're still in casting, or at least they were still making casting announcements not that long ago. Hmm. I don't know. I haven't heard anything about it in in quite some time. It's been a second since. Uh, that property was brought up. That was around the same time they were thinking about doing um, Justice League Dark with Guillermo mm. del Toro. That seems to have, I mean, that's definitely dead. They're talking about, oh, here's what we would have done. This is the swamp thing design. So I don't know. Um, Transmetropolitan, though, that one's an interesting one because it could be, especially with special effects that you have now, like if you if you do it in like a Blade Runnery type of thing, uh, visually at least, I think that could be very successful. But have you seen the Blade yeah. Runner Adult Swim show? By the way, Mm-mm. no, that is horrible. <laughs> that is uh, uh, ungodly. I can't believe they allowed that on the air. It looks like PlayStation One cutscenes. Do you want to pull up the trailer to that oh. real quick, Han, so people sure. know what we're talking uh, about here? It's only it's a standard adult swim show. It's only about 12 minutes long. And I was pretty excited about this. Mm. Um, and then I watched a couple of minutes of one episode. I was like, are you are you serious right now? This feels like a sci-fi show from the early odds. Yeah, this feels like I think it was Lex with two X's. That's what it looks like, except Lex probably had more fluid animation. It looks I, worse than that uh, Final Fantasy movie that we talked about. The other day. Well, Final Spirits Fantasy within? Spirits Within yeah. also has fluid animation, which makes it easy to watch, even if the, the designs Oof. are older. This is really bad. What year was this, man? Uh, this year. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, this, is, this started airing in late 2021.
there was a lot of hype around this and then it quietly just dropped on Adult Swim after a couple of years. Um, and now nobody talks about it. They just did another announcement like Blade Runner going to series for a live action show or something. Hmm. People, I don't even think people know this exists. It's on TV right now. That looks so bad. It looks like a PlayStation 2 cutscene, yeah. Uh, if Adult Swim wants to pay any of us to just play Cyberpunk 2077 on stream, <laughs> it will look better and be better than this in every possible way. Some of Psychonauts from the PlayStation 1, I think it was. <laughs> uh, that was active in the like, Cyberpunk world, but it's anime. Uh, yeah, this looks horrendous. I just, I, it looks, I, I'm in awe. That looks like Tekken 2. That is a Tekken cutscene. <laughs> that is a straight up Tekken cutscene. Martial law is being know. introduced. <laughs> it's an original Xbox cutscene, you know? That sucks. They should have been much more protective of the Blade Runner name. Yeah. I, I'm just, the fact that this made it to air and wasn't like a YouTube original or something. Like, what was the, uh, was it Mishima or some or some cutscene channel? Where would make movies? Yeah, Machinima. Machinima, yeah. Horrible. Yeah, that's how Rooster Teeth you know got to start. Yeah. You know what yeah. this? What this feels like? Uh, whenever you would see a, a trailer of like the Resident Evil One or Two, showing cutscenes like that. Well, actually, no, never mind. I, I started watch. I uh, started playing uh, Resident Evil One, uh, and uh, I don't know if you guys remember how that starts, but it's just really bad actors on like a field and they're running away from zombies but it's like just it's it's, it's, it's really bad uh but it kind of reminded me of that whenever you will play one of those games and the cutscenes look good for the time and then you play the game and it's like oh this looks nothing like those well, that, that's the fun cute. thing about the early playstation games is they just hired whatever like white actors lived in japan at that time so they're like the quality of acting didn't matter because they couldn't tell if they were acting well or not because the english right. was obviously second language at best so you had just a bunch of nobodies showing up and dressing up as like very Halloween store costume s characters. And uh, Resident Evil has great, great deliveries from some of these people. Um, also, I don't know if you guys were big fans of Twisted Metal back in the day, but there's a lot of lost cutscenes from that first game with some actors here. Why is um, this like fucking worth Because quality. it was PlayStation. It's going to be 360p. <laughs> I was a Twisted Kuwait. Metal fan. I love Twisted Metal. There's um, mm -hmm. uh, Hans, if you want to look up real quick, Sweet Tooth Ending, PlayStation. Oh my on God, Metal. I remember this. You've seen it before? Yeah, the Sweet Tooth. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the whole premise, I guess, of Twisted Metal, which was lost on me at the time because it was just a cool car game when I was playing that when I was like 12 or 13, is you win Twisted Metal, which is like a Cannonball Run meets uh, Battle Royale. And Calypso, who's like this weird long haired guy who has no face or something in, in the first game, will grant you a wish. And um, there's a bunch of really terribly acted end scenes that were not included on the game um, in favor of like a scroll because I guess they had to make space or something or they just didn't like how it came out that I discovered recently because I was watching a lot of Resident Evil documentaries for the show we did on it. And um, it linked me over to Twisted Metal and I got in this hole and I found these these endings. Hans, do you have anything on that? There's one that's animated. Is that the one you're talking about? No, 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 no. It's PlayStation 1. It's real people. Oh. Uh, well, give me one second. All right. There's a 37 minute of every ending, Ooh. but let me see if I can. It's on there. It's the first one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's got it. All right. Oh, one second. <clears throat> this. Oh, Sweet man. tooth, lost ending. Wow. So this was probably just filmed in some random LA uh, garage in 1995 or six. And uh, this is for the, the hallmark character of Sweet this Tooth. Is, this is Double Dragon again. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Cage, 
Sweet tooth in this game, I guess, uh, just kidnap some random Asian woman. Um, you like how the mouth doesn't really fit the dialogue no, this at is all. clearly dubbed bah, 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 Wouldn't it be cool to have an army of shirtless uh, naked people? <laughs> Jean, Jean wearing bad guys. <laughs> Give me that. Give me. A paper bag. You can't be serious. Oh, man. The threshold for like what is considered good writing <laughs> was so unbelievably low for video games up until like 2004 or five, I want to say. The same with acting, apparently. All right. This is like mankind. He's just going to talk yeah. to his hand. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I like how the idea here is that the guy who can grant you any wish and it has like magic on his side is somehow caught off guard in this moment by a guy pulling out a machine gun couldn't he just wish to have a face too like just could you know i owe you a debt of gratitude you are welcome to stay in my realm for as long what realm this is like a warehouse <laughs> <laughs> it's burbank you guys are both sick oh this is oh, one of the developer's girlfriends who just showed up that day. Mm -hmm. All right, that's enough. Oh, is that it? This is what they replaced we it the... with, is this scroll here. That's big. I don't know which one's worse. I guess this one's shorter, probably, right? My just... Yeah, we don't need to watch anymore. <laughs> All right. All right. I, think, I think we're good. We're at the two-hour mark now for, for movies. So, uh, you know what? We did talk about The Punisher quite, quite well and at length. Uh, we did, did those three movies and the Netflix series even justice uh, mm -hmm. compared to The Weatherman and the Family, which I feel like we did talk just enough about on the first show we did with you, Frank. So um, anyway, I, I know you're kind of a discreet fellow, so you don't really have anything to promote. But uh, Real sneaky. You, yes. It's be probably better that way, to be mm -hmm. honest with you. Um, but Hans, if you want to promote something, you want to promote, what is it, Bollywood Bollywood link for your pre premiere film, your debut. Yeah, what is World it? World renowned Bolly... entertainer Han, Hans Lam. What is it? Bo Bolly International Friends, comedian. Is it? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're kind of like the Russell Peters players. of our time, wouldn't you say, Hans? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I make all of those jokes about my dad beating me up for being a bad Indian. Uh, yeah, it's just, but you wiping your dad's ass because he had too many medical issues. <laughs> All right, you fuck. <laughs> <I'm sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Bali, sorry, Bali, Bali fan dot com. Bali, yeah, an internationally renowned comedian and entertainer. I've let's never see. The, hold on, let's even... just see the page real quick, since that's how we started the show. That's how we'll end the show. Okay. First yeah. appearance, movie, mass state, or is it uh, comfort systems? And it's comfort just not a line. Yeah. Movie, TV credits, good stuff. A lot I of. I don't even know who this character is from Comfort Systems. Who the fuck is Ivan? <laughs> Ivan you. Latimer. You? That's me making a pedophile <laughs> joke about you. Oh, um, <laughs> there's a bit about oh, this rapist was caught, and I put up a photo of you in glasses oh, in, yeah. in someone's kitchen, and that's yeah, where I was yeah, like, yeah, huh. Yeah. He could play a glasses wearing rapist again. <laughs> and that's this character now. So this is yeah. see, humble beginnings. But you're not really a rapist yeah. in the film. You're just a, a dastardly man. I'm just fun. I'm a fun guy. A fun, fun fellow. <laughs> An internationally renowned Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. All right. <laughs> I mean, we're laughing at you from a different country. It's, so, yes it's technically correct i guess so yeah yeah that's those indians got me got me right 
God damn. That's that's great. How do you? Um, oh, yeah, yeah. what? No, no, no. I just re- I remember how you became aware of this, but yeah, yeah. So but maybe that's the that's the market we should sell the movie to, like the Indian market. We just need a couple of scenes where I'm we dancing need a dance or something. Sequence. And- yes, can you, want, can you come yeah, back yeah. to the states for a week so we can get the choreography down? You just record each other just uh, uh dancing in front of a green screen and just put them all together <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah. just, five, just five minutes of it yeah it'll be like yeah. Macbeth. it'll be great um yeah yeah i i don't know we'll see what happens with this mass stay live not to be a tease or anything but i might have had a phone call only a week ago with an a-list director about this film so we'll see we'll see where that goes i don't know if people pay all attention right. they know what's happening maybe they have assumptions that they can make, but I'm excited about where things are going with Mass State Lottery. We'll see. We'll see what happens with this film when it comes out. Tentatively, Mike Flanagan. Mike Flanagan is uh, yeah. Very right, you got me. All right, old Mike Flanagan. <laughs> you know anything about our history with Mike Flanagan? <laughs> he's, uh, no. he's he's such an annoyance. Um, I well, didn't we just talk about this on the last show? I was telling somebody about this. But yeah. Mike Flanagan, who directed Doctor Sleep and does all those very popular horror shows on Netflix, um, is not a fan of ours because of some episode we. And as a matter of fact, I'll tell you what, I'm not typically conspiracy minded here, most of the time. But our episode on his film Doctor Sleep got removed from iTunes and Sp- I believe Spotify as well. Not long after he discovered the tweet of mine saying Dr. Sleep was the worst thing to happen to film. <laughs> it just it randomly disappeared mm-hmm. and no other episode ever, ever has that ever been the case. So I think it's a little fishy personally. I think he put in a call to somebody. I wound up blocked on Twitter for that one tweet. Never tweeted at him. He found it or whatever. Hans Name also searching. blocked. Never yep. a good sign. Yep. And uh, Jerry, who's another guy in our group, got blo- he didn't even do nothing. And then yeah. Mike Flanagan was digging through the old tweets of our fourth guy in our group and responded to one where he tried to like persuade him that his movie was good or something. So he, <laughs> the original Josh Trank approach, not agreeing. So I guess yeah, Flanagan yeah. has more integrity than Josh Trank by my own logic. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's been a, you know, he's been a nemesis, I guess, since, since that time. Anyway, <laughs> I wouldn't dare take his phone call, Hans. <laughs> oh, I would. <laughs> it's like, how much? <laughs> what do you offer? You millionaire Netflix person? Sure, fuck it. Why not? Yeah. Let's just see his soft round face. Yeah, he's got a, he's he's got a very baby esque look to him. Anyway, <laughs> that's been movies for this week. Thank you for listening.